Welcome back to Mike Up. Today's Monday, April 18th. It is the Easter weekend is over with. He is risen. Easter holiday. He is risen. <laughs> uh, Easter holiday hangover. I'm sure everybody uh, had a long day of family and food and maybe hey, some I'm beer. basketball. And maybe yeah. some basketball. Maybe a hangover from the Pels basketball game. Unless you gonna, participate what? in Ramadan. Unless you participate in Ramadan, which you found out that really? who's someone is participating in Ramadan. Who's uh, Kyrie. Kyrie. Is He's very Ramadan. crabby. But who else? Ali Gay. That's what I was talking about. Ali Gay participates in Ramadan. Uh, that is very, very tough. To, I'm not I'm not a good uh, not eating person. So <laughs> No, no. We practiced. You're getting better. We went to lunch on Thursday. Yes. Thursday. Very Waited controlled. Very, very controlled. Waited. Fasting is fasting is not my thing. No. But I'm working on it. I'm getting better at it. How long did you fast for? It is a inter- called intermittent fasting. Yeah. And cool. I fast till one. I eat my meals from one to eight, and then I'm done for the day. Wow, so, man, yeah, that's it. And you power. can't booze before one, right? Like you can't do you can't anything. Do anything. You can't really. You have to like. I drink coffee. I'm not mm. a booze. On the, I'm not an alcoholic guy. Well, I'm just saying, like, if you're playing golf, like, yeah, right, yeah, but like, I'm not, I'll do it every day. Like, oh. like intermittent fasting isn't supposed. You to You intermittent be done every intermittent fast. Day. Intermittent fasting is not supposed to be done every day. Really? Like. I've done it so long. I've done it for a long time that like I do it probably four or five times, four times a week. I don't do it every day just because I don't need. I don't need to now. If I'm like trying to be strict, keto seems like the thing. It's the new fad. I don't. It's a lifestyle, Lloyd. It's a lifestyle. I've gone keto before because I don't eat fruits or vegetables, so it's pretty easy. But okay, can, yeah. candy gets me every time. Pretty uh, pretty really? sauce. You're watching Mike Dove brought to you by <laughs> Sterling Automotive. I want to make sure I get my sponsors in. We are gaining sponsors. We've got a few more sponsors in. Uh, Rejuvene is welcome aboard to, to the show. Thank you for sponsoring. We have a couple more in the works that we will announce here coming up. We have a big show. Tigers get swept. Basically, uh, I don't want to say lost the, the West, but basically lost the West. This weekend, Arkansas is in first base at 11 and 4. LSU is 7 and 8. They're only four games back, halfway through. It's, uh, it's a lot of ground to cover. Arkansas looked like the better team. It looked like it was, um, you know, they don't look like they're going to give away too many games this season. We'll get into that. Wally Ponov Classic is tomorrow in Baton Rouge. They're playing you well. It is the last Wally Ponov Classic ever. Uh, we have Nick Ponov coming on a video call in uh, nine minutes. Nine minutes. In nine minutes to talk all about it, talk about what to expect, talk about why it is the last one ever. I'm excited. The Wally Ponov Classic was always one of the most fun games that I've ever played in. Usually play it in New Orleans at Zephyr Field. Uh, the way it was in the past, we usually play the game on a Wednesday and we continue on driving up to um, the road game, whether it's in our, um, whether it was Mississippi or Alabama, it's usually like the Alabama Auburn game or Mississippi Ole Miss game, Mississippi State or Ole Miss game, whatever one it was, continue to go. He usually played like, you know, Southern Miss or UL, Tulane, someone like that. But those games were always fun. You always energetic crowd. It was always for a great cause. If you don't know, Wally Ponov Jr. was a baseball player at LSU. Passed away, um, I guess, I think after his junior year, summer of his junior year at LSU. Um, it is great cause. Nick, my former teammate, my friend, is coming on here at, in now eight minutes. Eight minutes. To talk about it. Uh, One minute is longer than you think, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> that is true, Floyd. That Thank is you. Very true. Hey, how's the uh, F45 going? Great. You it's missed Monday every I'm week. I'm not done you yet. I have Monday. 5.30 and 6.30 still to go. Are I have go? time. Are yes. you going, going go? tonight? Yes, 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 right. yes. Do you have it? Yes. Is yes. This, this is documented. Is it for sure you're going today? Yes. I have people. I know people there. Yeah, that's how I have to go. Okay. Because you'll you know. Hold you accountable. You'll know. You'll know. Hold you accountable. Hold you accountable. Hold you accountable. We got this sponsorship for you. Thank you. Okay, I need. I want to. Now I need rejuven me. Double uh, up. Ooh. Yeah, maybe. 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 I don't want rejuven me. I don't know. Never Do you feel improvements? Do you feel from, better for at forty-five? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, Monday, dude, I actually Monday, felt healthy. The Monday, the Monday workouts are hard. I know. It's a good one today. Hey, there's a there's a stretch today. There's like a three, like a three workout stretch, where, who it's a doozy. A lot Strap of, up. A lot of, it's a lot of moving, a lot of jumping. It is. It's a doozy. There's can, actually two stretches, but there's one at the end. So it's the last four. It's the last three before this. Bad. He's doubting himself. <laughs> hey, you gotta go. You gotta go. Okay. You gotta go. You gotta go. What if I go. throw up there? Have you ever thrown up? I've almost thrown up, but I have not thrown. I'm not a big throw up or 
Throw her upper. Throw her upper? Work See, I'm either one or the other. Like, I either have to scale all the way back or I'm going 110. Okay. Well, I want you to go, uh, I want you to go 110. I don't want you to scale. I'm not, I'm up. not allowing you to do that. I already threw up this morning. Did you? No. Oh. Not good. I don't know. Don't say no. Like, it's, I've seen you do it. I know. Every, well. I've heard you do We've it. all done it. I've heard Either. about the, the Lloyd throw up in the morning stories, but. Dude, if you were to start your day. Throw up. Oh, I don't know about that. The adrenaline rush. I don't. Know. <laughs> I don't know about that. Ketosis. That, is, that to me, that is. I, I'm, I hate throwing up. I wake up the entire neighborhood when I throw up. So. Oh, you loud puker. Yeah, I'm loud. I'm a loud puker. Jack, silent puker. I'm a gentleman. I'm a gentleman. Are you good yeah, for you? Yeah, yeah, good yeah. for you. We got Floyd in studio. We have Jackie Boy in studio. We have Stewie in there doing some work in the produ production oh. room. Jay Mitch is not in studio. Jay Mitch is playing baseball. In High Point, North Carolina, they're getting ready for the independent ball season. He is going to maybe come on a video call, depending on their schedule. These next couple weeks are going to be a little wonky. Once the season starts for him, it'll be a lot easier to have him on a regular schedule because he's not going to be practicing. Their games are usually at night, and we're going to have him. NBA playoffs started. I know uh, everybody should be interested in it because the Pels are playing, and they did not win yesterday, but they got they won. We haven't had a show since they won. They got they won the play-in tournament. Got into the as the eight seed. They were winning yesterday, or they were losing yesterday. They were getting their ass kicked. They made a big run, got mm -hmm. it to six points, and then Chris Paul just stepped on the throat mm -hmm. in the fourth quarter. He scored 17 points in five minutes. Talk a little bit about that. I watched the game. I wasn't at the game, obviously, because I was in Phoenix. So I wasn't going to go all the way to Phoenix. Wasn't at Phoenix? Yeah, I was in Phoenix. Yeah. Why would you look at me I like thought that? you said you were in Phoenix. No, I, was, I wish uh, I was in Phoenix. I would have been at the game. Why would you look at me? Why would you confuse me like that? You confused me just for one second. Or sports. Yeah, yeah, yes, for sure. You're supposed to know these things. Um, but you had a lot of things going on. You had the Pellas lost. You had Kyrie covered. Played if, great. If you played. Do they cover? Kyrie no, played. No, but I tickled it up. The line was ten and a half. It was about eleven. I bought it to twelve. I bet you did. So I Lloyd wins. Did. Tease. We're talking a little about betting. We're getting more into the getting back into the gambling world. The NBA playoffs is more fun. Everybody's watching them. There's not as many games going on. Lock it in. Gamble. Win some money. I lost a lot of money. Not a lot of money. I actually won my bets, but I lost some of the, the prop bets. As in player scoring, I went Trey Young um, under Ooh. the 30 and a half. He went over. He went 38 in the game. I went McCollum over. He went under. This is Friday night, right? This is Friday night. Yeah, when this you went Friday nuclear. Night. I, didn't bet. I didn't really bet. It was, it was holiday weekend. I was with family, and I did not want to keep looking at my phone and getting hammered by my friends and family that I'm supposed to be paying attention to and looking at whatever. So I took the weekend off. Um, I will be hammering bets all week and trying to get my money back. Back. Again. Reaccumulate the funds that I've lost over the course of these last four Hammered months. the pills Friday. I, I, I won. It was getting I, dicey. I, I oh know. I got nervous, dude. I hammered them. It was good. It was like a pick them. It was a one-point spread. I, well, I yeah, messed, after, after I messed up, I took my time, and I wanted to, even with Paul George I texted supposedly you. playing, I know, and I got distracted, I didn't place the bet, and then Paul George wasn't playing, spread went from plus four to plus half a point. I was like, God damn it, I missed it, because I would have gotten good odds, bet it, because I was going to take money line, I wasn't going to take the points, I was taking money line no matter what, so I was going to take money line at plus four, I missed it, and that was a pick em, and I lost my, my plus money, well, I won the bet. But I lost my plus money. Um, talk a little MLB. Talk a little LSU football. But we, uh, like I said, in three minutes now, three minutes we have my good friend Nick Ponoff coming in and talking about the Wally Ponoff Classic. So we're just going to BS for the next three minutes. Well, no, but we BS, but also I think you should set the table for what we wanted to talk about because somebody right in the chat has talked about everybody was seeing the ball to Blake Money's hand, and I don't know if that's exactly what was happening. He said, he said everybody was seeing the ball. He said, like, everybody's mother could see the ball to Blake Money's hand. Okay, and then so, boom. we're going to as part of the LSU baseball talk. Hang with us. Nick Poniff is talking LSU baseball, obviously. He's from playing from the LSU baseball family, LSU baseball game tomorrow. But the Blake Money incident, I want to get an incident. The Blake Money stuff. Saga. Things. Whatever you want to talk about it, we're going to talk about it. He went six and two-thirds, which is, is good going into a game. He only gave up four runs. Right, but if you watch the game, a lot of other balls were hit that probably should have been home runs that weren't because of the wind and because of the conditions that the game was being played in. I'm watching the game and I'm like, man, he first of all, Blake Money has good stuff. He throws hard. He has a mm -hmm. good breaking ball. 
He's got to change. Like he's he's a strikeout pitcher. He only had one strikeout. To me, with that, seeing that he only had one strikeout, watching the game with my two eyeballs, and seeing the balls being hit off of him, I declare thought and I felt that Arkansas had his pitches. I don't know if he was tipping. I don't know if they were getting the pitches from the way the catcher was relaying the signs to the pitcher. I don't know how they got them. I don't know even if they had them. But the way they were swinging at balls and the way they were taking pitches Nicholas is here. and the way that they were approaching the plate, it sounded like heaven. Nick Poniff is on the line. I don't want to leave him waiting. He's a busy man. And uh, we're, so we're going to talk to him now. We're going to get back to that Blake Money stuff in a very little bit after this conversation. But now i got to sit down because I have these stupid earphones on. I hate these earphones. It's totally up to you, dude. Nicholas, can you hear me? Yo. You can hear me. I can hear you. Welcome back, Man. Nicholas. Yeah, look good. Thanks. Look good. I know I just talked Thank to you before. You. It's, not, it's not the first time I've seen your office. Now it's the second time I've seen your office. That's right. I love your office. It's very professional. Which tickets are those Thank back you. there? Thank you. Those are actually – those tickets are – you mean on, on the back wall back here? Yep, yep. So so back in the day, Mikey will remember this. I don't even think they do this anymore. They did baseball cards. Yes. Uh, and so the original that, NFT. And so those yep. are – yeah, the original. There you go. Some, <laughs> yeah, so those are the baseball cards back in 2009 when we all played together. So I got everybody's framed, and I, I think I got everyone signed by all of our teammates. So you were a big – My dad gave me that for a gift. You were a big team signed. So we had when we won Omaha that year, we had the chairs that we all stole from the locker room. And you oh, had yeah, the idea yeah. of getting everybody to sign it. And now looking back, like that was a genius idea. But I was 19 years old and I didn't think like, I don't want anybody to sign this. Like I just want to have it. <laughs> and now I don't ever use the chair. I'm like, yeah. shit. I <laughs> definitely should have had people sign that. Like, and that, that carried like over to Mikey's professional career where he got no jersey swaps. No jersey swaps. I know that was my fault too. Well, you know what was weird is we all had all the bags and everything, and we hop on the charter flight in Omaha to come back to the whole celebration <laughs> in Baton Rouge, and every one of us is carrying our bags on one arm, and we're carrying these freaking locker room chairs in our other arm. Yeah, what is- everybody's like, why are y'all carrying chairs? What, what is the purpose of the chairs? And back in the day, anything's free. You're taking it. That's so it. we were just and like, let's honestly, take chairs. It wasn't, so supposed was to be, it wasn't supposed to be free. We just told the security guy, hey, if we went Omaha, no. we're taking these chairs. He goes, okay. We're and taking these chairs. You let him take it. Yeah. Let's take it. Uh, That's right. Good times. Good memories. Great, great memories. Um, speaking of great memories, yeah, some of my favorite baseball memories yeah. were one growing up watching LSU play, and that was part. Your brother was part of that, and then two being yeah. able to go through LSU and being part of the Wally Pontiff Junior Classic in New Orleans, and that game is being held in Baton Rouge tomorrow against ULL, and this is the last. Wally Pontiff game ever, correct? That's right. This is it. Why why is this that is one and, and two, like um what kind of went into those conversations of making this the last one? Yeah, so Whew, so this is the seventeenth one, Mikey. If you can believe wow. it, I, I, I it still feels like. I mean, I'll tell you, it still feels like. You know, I've never come to the to the. People say, "Oh, you miss Wally." I'm like, yeah, I miss him, but he's. It still feels like in my head that I'm this 16 year old brother. He's the 21 year old brother that's still up in college playing baseball, and I don't think it's ever truthfully set in that he is gone. So in this weird facet of my six inches between my head, it's hard for me to even grasp that it's been 20 years since his passing in the 17th game. But um, so so yeah, there's a combination of the events that happened with the with the foundation, and I'll go through it. But uh, we had you know, Mikey, because you have a foundation, and you know the the rigors and and the difficulties with managing a foundation is that you got to have an executive director, and so we had an outstanding executive director, um, and unfortunately, uh, catastrophic. She had complications from COVID and passed away in 2021. Oh, wow. Wow. Um, and so we lost our executive director and then you couple that with, uh, Zephyr field, the Zephyrs moved to Wichita, right? And so they were the man, they were the, the lessor or the lessees of the, of the shrine on airline. And so when they leave, you don't have anybody managing the field, keeping up the field. And so the field is now a rugby field, uh, if you can believe it. Wow. So um, there's no there's no stadium to, to basically play in down in the New Orleans area. So we lost that access. 
Um, and so this game was actually supposed to be played in Baton Rouge in 2020. Um, and then COVID hit, supposed to play, be played again in 2021. COVID was still there. Um, so we weren't able to do that. And so now is really, it was, it was supposed to be the last one in 2019 or 2020. This is the final one. Um, and we're, we're like super thankful, like overly thankful to LSU for giving us, uh, basically a home game that they're giving up for us to have one final hoorah, um, for the foundation and the classic and to basically bring, uh, bring Wally back to, to, to the box for one last time. No doubt. I'm going to be there. Obviously, thank you to you for thank hooking you. me up with yeah. two tickets. I will be there with my wife. Um, is there uh, anything special going on that y'all are going to do, uh, being as, being that it's the last game? And are there obviously tickets still available if people want tickets? How do they find them? All of those good things. Yeah, thank you, Mikey. So, number one, um, if you've ever been to a classic, you know probably one of the most, at least for me, and I think others would probably lament with this fact, one of the coolest parts is the tribute video. So the tribute video is still being there um, due to uh, <laughs> SEC Network and the various pressures that be with you guys organizing the media and all those sorts of organizations. Hey, hey, don't put whoa, me. Don't whoa, put whoa, me. Whoa, in. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't no, put me. I'm great. just yeah. <laughs> it's great. It's great. No, 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 no. It's great. No, no, okay. it's great. It's great. It's great. But uh, we don't have three minutes and 15 seconds in between innings um, to, to basically show the video. So the video's moved. So if, if you're coming to, to the game and you want to see the video, 617, the, get, the video will be well, – I just got the pregame lineup. 617. So before the game, get there early. The video will show at 617, the, and, it's, and it will run in its entirety. Um, so that's really cool. And, and, and But outside of that, this is really a standard uh, – LSU game being run by LSU. Um, we really have no control over it. Um, it like I said, they're, they're basically giving us a game. We're, we're receiving the, the, the ticket sales, the proceeds of the ticket sales for the game. So we're basically leasing the field from them for one for one game. So um, that's being done. And then if you would like to buy tickets, there are still uh, plenty available. It's supposed to be a nice, beautiful night. Thankfully, the weather held off. Um, you can go to the LSU ticket office. You can call up them uh, or call them up, and you can buy it over the phone, or you can go to lsutickets.net, ticks, T-I-X, dot net. Uh, we would love to see you out there. And like I said, all ticket sales, every single dollar of it um, goes to the foundation. Love that. I will be there. Everybody else should be there. Thank you. Uh, the tribute video is one of my favorite things I get to see because I, even when you're playing, like that's kind of – you know, like I said, I grew up an LSU baseball fan, and so I, I kind of know the history. And a lot of people here, obviously, going to the games are LSU baseball fans, not just from the last few years, but for their lifetime. So being able to see those videos and kind of go back in time and just kind of see everything and see what – because Wally, to me, is what epitomizes LSU baseball, right? Just the way he played and how he was and all those things. So I – got to watch the video and it was before the game and I always was like man this is like Tears? I should probably yeah it was like it, I should probably record this and list, watch this before every game mm -hmm. like it was just one of those things that kind of got oh, me in like the yeah. in like the the right state of mind so you got to go video yeah. then eye black just in case I don't no I was an eye black guy Come oh on. yeah no, yeah you're Bing's guy <laughs> Come on. no, no eye black. I didn't have I didn't have much swag much swag on the field outside of screaming when I made a play no, or something you, well, here's the difference. You, you you didn't have all the 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 belongings that they have now. You just put it. You 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 let that exhibit through your play, which is exactly. which is what we should do more often, right? That's what that's we should a, do. Hey, more that's often. a perfect segue into Floyd wants to ask you a question. Oh, I was going to say, do you think does everybody go yes. pants up for the oh, the no. pond of oh, classic? Yeah, yeah. So everybody what, goes pants up. I love that tradition. I did. If they keep it going. I don't know. Yeah, if they're thank on. you, Floyd. I, so I would I would love that. <laughs> I think but my you know, Floyd. So so hold on. So let me think. These did you? Your name is Floyd, right? No, it's, it's, it's Lloyd, but I call him Floyd. It's, it's Floyd. So, Sean Ochinko. Yeah, okay. Sean Ochinko is the one who gave him that nickname, Floyd. So I call him Floyd. All right, good. Well, I'll call you Lloyd or Floyd. Yeah, Floyd. Floyd. Two. Floyd. Uh, you're the, you're, you, you should Floyd. I like that. No, so the pants up was always when we were there. We did that in in in, in memory of him, um, and it carried through 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 a few years. So look, this is twenty. He passed away in two thousand two. So this is twenty years. So most of these kids weren't even alive um, with, that are playing in this game, weren't even alive uh, when he was when he was playing. So I don't know. We'll see if, if, if somebody still is within the ranks of LSU and, and can 
can get the guys to wear the pants up. But what would look? It's their game. It's it's their deal. It's their players. Whatever I'll, they want to do. I'll send out. Like, just, I'll send out a yeah, couple. Mikey Media can put a word I'll in. I'll send out a couple texts and see if I can't yeah, get. Say, can't that, get the guys yeah, to, to that's buy always in. Super special. Yeah, I'll see if yeah, I can't get you know that. How superstitious guys. No can. doubt. You know how they can be superstitious in it, yeah. Speaking yeah. of though, speaking especially of especially the ones with bird legs. <laughs> <laughs> speaking of speaking of like the older and the newer and just the way that the game has changed, right? You are an LSU fan yeah. more than just p- being playing like playing there. You follow them, you watch them. Uh, yeah. They obviously got swept this weekend. You watched the Friday yeah. night game. I, you know, I'm sure you've kept up with some of the scores throughout the course well, of the Thursday year. Thursday night, sorry. Thursday, Thursday night. Sorry, Thursday yeah, night. I know what you yeah. meant. I know Thursday. what you meant. Thursday yes. night game. Time yes. and date. Yes. Yeah, it's you know, it, yeah. it's tricky sometimes. Mm-hmm. Time and date. Time I know we talked yes. about that. You got to attention Time to detail, date. Floyd. <laughs> yeah. ATD. Um, but what have you? What have you seen from them as as compared to like what you've seen in teams past, based off teams that you've played with, teams that you've seen, and just baseball in general? Over the last, you know, couple of years. Whew. that's a loaded question. Yeah, I, I know. Like we can talk about this for Let's talk days. About um, you know, I think they've got the players. I think pitching lacks. I think that that's well. I think that's. That, I think that everybody knows that big, good Starting pitching beats pitching, good right? hitting every day of the week. Yeah. Right. So yeah. So starting or any pitching really to me, any pitching beats good hitting every single day. So um, you, you always knew this team was going to come with the offense and with the bats, right? Because they had that, 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 that power lineup, so to speak. Um, but I'll tell you that to stay in the games, they had to pitch well and they've got to play good defense. So, I, I, look, I, I, I read it through the media and, 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 and listen to, to what, whatever it is out there. And I know I'm talking in circles right now and I'm trying not to, but there, I think well, I gave there's you so many different pieces – yeah, there's so many different pieces that add into it, but but I'll tell you, I think the number one thing is culture. Um, yeah. you, you, it, it's not about the Jimmys and Joes. I mean, sorry, it's not about the X's and O's. It's about the <laughs> Jimmys and Joes, and then what comes what comes with the Jimmys and Joes is they have to buy into the right culture. And so, look, we're in a transition period, right? We went from one head coach to a new head coach, and he's trying to figure out his Jimmys and Joes, and I think he's trying to instill his culture. And so, you've got to create buying, and you've got to create ownership. And um, I, I, I think the, the pace of play and the standard of play that we see is second to the culture. And I think they're trying to build the culture. So when you ask me how do I think they're, they are on the field, it's hard to even give a, a qualified answer to that. Because I think if you ask Coach Jay Johnson, he would be like, look, you guys are all worried about the wins and losses. Right now, I'm just trying to figure out who I got, how right. to manage them, how to execute them properly. You know what I mean? So. I think they're working through that. It yeah. would be my long answer to that. No doubt. And I talk about it all the time on the show. And, and, and when Jared's here, we talk a lot about it as, as how close that we were as a team, right? Whether it was just 2009, even the te- years after oh. that, and how much we hung out together and how the locker room was fun and how, some t- honestly, the biggest assets to that team were you and Buzzy and McGee. And y'all didn't play every day, but y'all were probably some yeah. of the bi- best leaders on Dug the team. dogs. Right. And so to me – that goes into your point about being about the culture. It's like you want to see these guys want to win for each other. If they don't want to win for each other, then they're not going to win at all, right? It's going to be a lot of individuals, and it's not going to. And I'm not saying that's how they how Absolutely. they are. I'm not saying that's no, what they're doing. No, but I don't that's, think you're saying that at all. Right? That is a big part of. Everybody's Sports. trying to find their way. Exactly. Everybody's trying to find their way. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. No, I'm with you. I think everybody, I think coach is trying to find his way. Why? I think he's got a clear direction of where he needs to go. But look, ownership and buy-in takes time, Mikey, right? Like yep. you were, you, well, you weren't there, but if you, if we go at, if we, if you bring Paul Venary on right now and you ask him from the time he took over in 2007 or 2006 to where we got to in 2008 and nine, I mean, it was a, yeah. well, it, you were right it in the middle a of a roller coaster right. ride. Yeah, it was a roller coaster ride those first couple years, um, and it was very difficult. And he was trying to paint his picture of what he wanted, and then we had to eventually say, "Hey, we believe in Coach. We're going to buy into his system and his process, and then let's go play together, right?" And then you got to have the right Jimmys and Joes on the field, right? So, like, all of that came to play in '08 and '09, and so I think it's very difficult to really critique. I mean, yes, you can critique the play that we're seeing right now, but it's difficult to critique how they're going to end up this year because 
it's a transitory period. It's a transition period. You know what I mean? And yeah. I don't, I, it, I don't, you know, it's hard to eat. They very easily could go off on a run and that yep. wouldn't surprise me or they could go on a skid and that wouldn't surprise <laughs> me either. Right. You know, I think we're going to, I think the only consistent thing we'll see is the inconsistency of this team for the remainder of the year. I agree. And that's by no knock at all. That's no knock at all to coach Jay Johnson and his staff. But it's just the nature of when you take over a new team, there's going to be inconsistencies. No doubt. And I think the ba- the, the SEC in general has a lot more parity in the league than they had in years past. Obviously, Absolutely. it was always top-heavy. It was always a good league. But now, I mean, A&M wasn't supposed to be what they're doing. They're 8-7 and seven in the West. Arkansas is probably running right. away with the West right now. I don't see them going on a skid. They played too good a defense for them to go that way. Tennessee's running away with the yep. East, right? So you have those two teams. But even Vanderbilt is – I think seven and eight or eight and seven in conference play, and they weren't even ranked going into the the weekend. So the parity of the SEC in general this year is is very good, which makes it harder, which kind of goes into the inconsistency of a, of a team with a new uh, transition transitionary. How do you say this? How's that word? How does that word go? Transition transitional transitional. I guess was the right word. Transitional, transitional. period. Yeah, you know, so like you have a whole new staff yeah. and all new guys yeah. and stuff like that, but. Um, I'm with you. I think that the inconsistency is gonna. But you're right. They could some fi- right the ship, right the ship somehow find the right mojo and yeah, end up going on a me. 12 game winning streak and be a national seed. But you never know. No, you, when you see it, when you saw it, what happened with with Maneri's later years is they would start off well, then go rocky to start SEC play, and then it, it literally. Once May hits, it's like all of a sudden all the stars align right. and they, they start taking off. And so I would not be shocked at all if that happens because, um, again, you're still trying to figure out who you got and where to where, what's your best options to win with the players that you have. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, no doubt. But I, but I would tell you that um, uh, it is a uh, – it's definitely a different game, right? So it's mm-hmm. a definitely a different type of style of play that I think LSU is used to or us fans are used to. And it um and look the, I loved Coach Maneri, Smoke before him. I love Smoke. I was a big smoke guy as well. And then Bertman was incredible. This guy, Jay Johnson, I mean you know this Mikey. I don't think there's a coach in America that outworks him. Right. right? So like that man it lives, breathes, sleeps, eats at the field, right? And so when you've got that recipe of the hard work um, the success will eventually come. It's just a matter of when it will come. You follow me? Yeah, I'm with but you. I think I think part of the inconsistent. I think I think the maj- and he probably would allude to this again. This is just fandom speaking, but I think part of the inc- inconsistencies that we're seeing is most prob not because the players aren't good enough. I think it's more, and you can disagree with me or not. I think it's more because of um, the lack of the team buying into one another and rallying around the true leader, right? And inconsistencies normally play out when that happens. So I think yeah. the team's trying to figure out who the true leader is. Yep. Um, and then I think once you identify that leader and you all start working together, uh, unbelievable things normally come to fruition. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I know you platooned infield outfield for LSU whenever you were here, but – and I don't want to shit on Jordan Thompson, but he is going through it right now. So I'm just wanted to ask you, whenever, yeah. what 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 can he do? Do we put a do we put hats on backwards? What do we wear? Do we nair the butthole? What do we have to do <laughs> to be able to get Jordan Thompson right again? Because he was what second team All SEC defensively last year, yeah. and just take me kind of to that yeah, place. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, I I don't think I'm the guy to ask for that because uh, <laughs> he, he, this the, co- co- coach will actually tell uh, speak. He would speak to this if you asked him. Tennessee, 2007, we're playing at home. Um, I was. This is actually you your the year that on? I started. Um, but what's that? You say you put your boots on, kicked a couple around. Well, no, I was starting. Yeah, I was starting at second base, and I made four errors in one game. Ooh. All right, literally balls going through my legs. Single handedly lost the game. I felt like tomatoes were being thrown at me on the field. <laughs> like, boo, pot up, you suck. <laughs> and it went on and on and on, uh, and we lost. And that was a Saturday. And you, Mikey knows this. When you get to the field on Sunday, that's an early morning quick oh, yeah. turnaround, right? Like it's you, you're you're there super early, especially if it's a if Tennessee, it's an 11 a.m. game because they got to get home to make their flight in time. But anyway, I get to the field at like 7 a.m. that morning. Did you go out the night before? Anna, 
No, 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 no. In my locker, it said Pana left field, and there was an outfielder's glove in my locker. <laughs> <laughs> that that was the last time I ever played infield for the LSU Tigers. That was the last time. So if you ask me, and Mikey can attest to this, we have a group text. Yep. I actually said on the group text yep. um, after the game Thursday night, I said, Jordan Thompson's going to show up to the field tomorrow <laughs> morning with an outfielder's glove in his locker. Because, I mean, look, that's the way Coach Maneri would have handled it. Not saying, uh, not, I don't believe that, they, look, everybody to each his own. But, like, he's in his own head. The guy yeah. can play defense. Mm-hmm. I know he right. can play defense. He's in his own head. So, but it's a matter of can you get out of your own yep. head? I mean, Chuck Knobloch never could make another throw to first base again. So, like, it, you, you know, it, it, the mind games happen. Yeah, it's a mental part of baseball is very, very hard. Yeah, rather the the outfield glove and the red tag, make sure you make the rooster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. That's exactly um, right. I don't know. What do you guys think? I'm with you. I think that uh, – I think he's. I think he's. I think he's a good defender. I think he's athletic. I think he's good enough to make all of the plays. He's got a great arm. I think that he is in his own head. I think that he now he's starting to count the bounces and like mm-hmm. he's watching the ball. Like if you put him on the edge of the grass and you started peppering balls at him and he didn't have time to think, I think he'd make all the plays. Take the cup out. But Bingo. the fact that he's Bingo. playing shortstop. Ooh, he, yeah, take the cup out. Ooh. <laughs> the bold ah, move. That's a, that's a bold move. But I think the fact that, that he, has, a bold he has a lot of time to think and make the plays, and they just, like, you know, baseball, the game, the ball is always going to find yeah. you when you're struggling or if you're the, the new guy on the, on the yeah. field, right? And so that's kind of what's yeah. happening. And it's not just him. He's not the only one making errors, right? It's, it's going all around. The, the yep. catchers aren't playing very well behind the dish defensively. No. You know, they're making errors up on both sides of the middle infield, second and short. You know, there's just you have a lot of different things. And even, even plays that aren't errors that – are just not being made. The plays that aren't being made that aren't considered mm-hmm. errors that probably should have been made are happening, right? And like they have, you know, whatever their fielding percentage is based off of errors this year, they could probably have, you know, six, seven, ten oh. more throughout the course of the year if you had a stricter scorekeeper, right? But, you know, that's just the game of baseball. Yeah. Like this past weekend, Arkansas scorekeeper was pretty generous to the Arkansas home, home fan, home, home team. Very generous. Yeah. And you know, yep. uh, Thursday night game had one air. They probably could have had three or four. So I'm with you. I think it's yep. all a mental thing for him. Well, I think but Mikey, I think what you're saying that builds into exactly the, what we were talking about before this is that the inconsistencies that we're seeing are, are not the norm for, for the guys on the field. And so what is that from? What is the cause of that? And I, I really do believe that the, the, the root cause of that is everybody's trying to identify the culture and how this whole thing will work simultaneously together, right? right. Because right now it seems that if, if you're going to make those mental mistakes, if they continue to happen and we know that we're better than that, than the play that we're putting out there, something is going on mentally mm-hmm. among the team that's allowing this to happen, right? And so I think that's what they're trying to attack is where is that coming from? You know what I mean? Yep. No, that's, and that's the hardest thing. That's the hardest thing to figure out in sports, not just in baseball, just in sports, just figure out, okay, why is my, why, why am I in my own head? How do I get out of my own head? And Trust me, if I could yep. if I could have figured that out yep. a lot earlier, I wouldn't be here talking to you and be on the field somewhere else. But <laughs> it's, not, it's, it's, lot, it's, it's easier said than done, that's for sure. You you figured it out way more than most of us. You had it figured out way more than most of us. Uh, not you didn't walk up with an outfield glove in your locker, dude. You, no. I mean, you played outfield, but could you imagine? Like, here you go, dude. Here's the here's the secret. Yeah, that, it, you're not you're not going to see outfield. It's not my fault, dude. It's you're not going to see. Look, if, if they're taking the outfield you glove from me, Floyd. Go for it. Go. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, go no, for it. I was, what I was saying is, Floyd, here's the deal. Here's the deal. What that message basically told me that day, and I guarantee you if this happened to Jordan Thompson, he walks in on Tuesday night, there's an outfielder's glove in, in his locker. I, I would be willing to say that he'd probably go three for four and there'd be a random home run in there. Like, it, it, because, you know what, he'd be out of his own head and he'd say, you know what, let me just go hit now. Well, right? and, that, and that's and the thing. Probably, that's the thing is I what? think I think that they if he did that he would say okay I can just focus on offense and no matter how bad I'm playing like they still I'm still good enough to be in the lineup you know so like absolutely it would it would give them a peace of mind for sure yeah and maybe outfielder- maybe put it maybe eventually move them back to short I don't know yeah all outfielders do is work on exactly their swing right. anyway that's, that's right what they do in the outfield all day 
That's it. That's it. That's it. And any infielder can move to an outfield with ease because you catch pop flies in the infield. It's a different angle, yes, but it's. I mean, if you can run fast, you can move to the outfield and be a serviceable outfielder. Well, you're a good. You're a serviceable. You didn't run very fast, but you were a serviceable outfielder. No, I mean. yeah, I mean, because you you you're working on angle. I mean, a ground balls, you're working right. on angles. So right. like, you know, you're just you're just cutting an angle to the ball. You hey, know? Nick, Nick. I mean, I could never I could never play center field because that you got to You have right. to really have incredible angles, left and right. It's right. pretty stationary. Right. You know, he was a great. We had the last group of BP, and he they would put on a show, and Nick would hit some some cool side homers better than anybody could do it, and and he was the best outfielder. He would come in and attack the ball. And he hit his cutoff man every time. It was unbelievable. That a boy. It was crazy. He stopped. He stopped more runners. He stopped more. He stopped the running game more in the outfield than most outfielders do that with great arms because of that, right? So I think that was an infield. That's the infielder part moving to the outfield. Well, we're moving around. Where are we going? Uh oh. Can you hear us? I think he lost an AirPod. Mm, yeah. Oh no. Down. Oh, he's out. Oh no. And, uh, you were just buttering him up too. I know. I was. I was pumping him up. Oh, he's back. Can you hear me? What just happened? Hey, Nicholas. What are you doing? <laughs> Hello? Oh. Maybe I'm he'll call back. I'm going to tell him we're calling back. Or maybe he'll call back. Hey, Dougie Thompson coming in studio. There we go, dude. Hey, there things are starting go. to work out for us. Things are starting to work out. Oh, he's back. Let's see. Hold on. It's an AirPod. Hard. What happened? Took an oh, he's, back. he's back. He's back. He's back, back in there. So a call came in and it boots you off the call. It boots hey, me off this when you a call missed, comes you in. You missed. I was buttering you up. Dude. He was, dude. Like, Gosh, thank you. I was pumping thank you that up. Makes me I was feel talking good. about Both how, hands. how fundamentally sound you were in the outfield, how great you are hitting your cutoff, man. <laughs> God and how, bless. I love yeah, you. Just, thank I was, you. you know, hey, Pimp Sundays. Man. Pimp Sundays. Nick had the best pimp jobs on Sundays. We had what the, is we, Pimp Sundays. Pimp Sundays. They don't. They yeah. probably don't do that anymore because they don't it's have. Not you you get some it's not what you think. It's again. not what you think. It's not yeah. what you think. So we have. You have the outfield, no. infield, outfield. You have fly balls as your last thing as an outfielder, right? You now the ground balls are in the, yeah. the infield. So on Sundays, we had Pimp Sundays. So you had to pimp home runs or pimp the outs, catch the ball in some creative way, and he always had the most creative. It's nice. Fun ways, either between the legs, behind the back, hat. Oh, oh yeah, he was. And if you if you yes. miss, you can't do it until you catch it. You can't come in. Until you do you have to use the exactly same move right. every time? No, you can change it up. You okay. want? Yeah, you no, no. If you, you start, it's like a dunk contest. Well, not like the dunk. No, you contest. better change it. Up. But if you start with one, do you have to finish with that move, or can you pivot? Like uh, if you try to go behind the back but don't catch it, can you go to a different? No, you move? can still do it. You can okay. still do it because they're they're difficult. You know, yeah, they're pretty difficult. But drop one yeah. in, he was drop one in the pants. That's that's a risky move. I'm not messing that one. It's easy to be great at something when you don't have to play that day. And so if the ball hits your 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 private area, it's, it's fine. Like <laughs> no you, big deal. You're not playing that day, so you can. Yeah, you, you, the game you're winning that day is the Pimp Sunday. Is you're not you, you know you're not playing, so you can you can go take the biggest risk. You That's know? It. exactly. That is it, um, dude. I feel like Nick was a big flip the hat on the head guy in the dugout, just hey, sitting there. Nick, I'm telling you, he was like they were. I, I say they as in like the dugout crew. Between, the triplets, like the, yeah, no, it's me, Buzzy, and McGee. Yes, we, they were yeah. unbelievable, and y'all recruited Bo and Grant Dozar. That's right to join the squad. But uh, like they were enormous for the team. Like, dude, playing's cool, but you know what's better? Uh, Sitting in the bench. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> it was, you know how hard it is to pass the time, like every single day for four hours for four years. That's a lot. That's a long hey, time sitting the bench. Hey, That's Buzzy, it. Buzzy used to walk. <laughs> Buzzy used to walk on the team bus. And he go to like some of the young guys that didn't play, and he said, yeah. "Boy, coach didn't even look at you today. He ain't playing." <laughs> what did he say? He said something. He did. He, did. he said something. No, he did. Line. Coach didn't even know something along those lines. You're yeah. right. Coach didn't even take a look at you today. <laughs> you <get> a <laughs> That's true. That's true. Uh, but that stuff like that. Everybody, like everybody that. would laugh, yeah. and everybody would like, you know, that's just, and that's what, it, that's what we needed. Maybe that's what they're missing. You know, we had a, we had a good recipe for success, yeah. Mikey. And you can't, like I told you, you can't, you can't create that type of atmosphere. It was the old school uh, Louisiana born and bred guys that were senior laden that weren't good enough to play that were totally okay with the fact 
they weren't good enough to play right. and realize their role was to try to hey make this a happy fun environment for the rest of the guys so that they can have a, uh, so that they can actually play well and we can basically hop on the backs of them and have the accolades due to their play so no, y'all had some a, big but y'all had some old, y'all had some big moments you're not you're su- you're selling yourself short like y'all had oh no 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 but you know what I, no yeah. I, you don't need to no no no, I no. we're gonna win state but no. not tonight <laughs> <laughs> that's it that's it that, that's it no no that but but it was a very selfless environment but i'll tell you it took it took time for all three of us to accept you like you at some point you right Uh-oh. again with this he's a busy Uh-oh. man you cut out you cut out nick you cut out he's getting another phone call yeah yeah he's a busy man he's yeah, a very nick. busy man he's a he's business nick he's back yeah i'm still here yeah, you got very I'm you're very here. you're a very busy man you got a lot of things you're cooking no, I'm sorry. No, no, I'm good. Um, but anyway, I no, thank y'all for letting me even come on. And I'm not trying to kick myself off by any no, means. No, no, but no. I know look, y'all I know have you, other segments. I know, you got, I know you have Doug Thompson's coming on. We're going to talk the whole weekend about LSU for baseball. Good. Um, I appreciate you coming on. I just wanted to give the flowers to the Wally Ponov Classic because it is, it is awesome. I love it. I'm going to be there on Tuesday, and I thank wanted you, you to go out there and promote it. And you're one of my good friends, and I wanted to be able to. I wanted you to come out here and, and be able pitch? to have a voice to do it. He's turning out the first pitch. Six thirty, first pitch. I can't thank y'all for um, giving me the time to to come on here and promote it. And uh, congrats to you, Mikey, on the show. It's going incredible. Floyd, nice to meet you. Pleasure, brother. You seem like an awesome. No, you seem like an awesome sidekick to Mikey. So um, I've watched snippets of y'all through. I can't wait for you to keep growing in popularity. Uh, I appreciate uh, that. You're actually really, really good at. I, I. I actually told Mike the other day, your brother-in-law, I told him, I said, I think Mikey absolutely found his niche. I said, he is so good at this. So I appreciate congrats that. Thank to you, you man. Thank you. Keep, appreciate that, Keep man. up the hard work. Yeah, I appreciate it. And, uh, All right. We'll be, I'll, I'll see you tomorrow, man. Thank you for the time. Pants up tomorrow. Pants up. I'll make, Pants that, up I'll make that happen. I'll make Pants that happen. I'll make that happen. I love that. All right, Thanks, dude. guys. Thank you, man. See y'all later. All right, appreciate it. All right. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye, Floyd. Thanks. Bye, Floyd. Mikey, your friends are awesome. Awesome. I mean, they're my friends for a reason. Yeah. Wrong uh, button, bud? Wrong button, bud. That was my only fans. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Nick's one of my all-time favorite human beings. What a dude. He's never awesome, never dude. talked to him before. He is awesome. He's, like, super smart. He's he is, You can thank him. He is the brains behind F45. He owns the one here with oh. Bo. So he's part owner of that one with Bo and Anthony. Does he enter his phone? Yes. Okay. Obviously, you know, except when he's talking to us. Yeah. Well, no, but, I'm just saying Bo. I mean, uh, but as I, I got on today. I said I, I have my thread, my our text thread, and we were in a, me, him, and another guy were in a group text about like going like shoot, like play basketball, right? Last week. So every time I would text Bo about basketball, he would text the group that he wouldn't respond to my text. He would just put it in the group. It's text. like he has an Android. So listen, listen, listen. He used to have one. This so, is what it is. It's rooted in bad so behavior. So I had, I went down and I sent him another text this morning, or last night, no response. So I sent him a text this morning. I look at his thing. I have, there's like seven text messages of just me. I just, I had all blue. That's the best thing about you is you will wear somebody and out. And so I texted him and I said, uh, but it wasn't like, it wasn't like rapid fire text. It was like days, right? Like one text a day that no response. So I texted him. I was like, man, I feel like a uh, psycho ex-girlfriend looking at our text. Yeah, what is this? <laughs> and of course, he responds. He goes, that made me laugh. I responded. Yeah. He's like, yeah. Like, you know, I'm not trying to bug you, but like, you're my best Thank friend. You. I like to hang out with you. And just say you're something. Ignoring That's me. what he does. He does that to me. I said three texts. Like, dude, are we even friends? Like, just, ah, just shit. respond. Just, just say right something. Through. Just say something to acknowledge that. I know because I know that you are getting it. And I know that you are seeing it. So just acknowledge that so you're like, ignoring hey, I can't me. talk right now. That's fine. I'm, I'm a big boy. I can handle it. But like, when you ignore me, I don't like that. You're you know? gonna cut me, cut me. Yeah, that's what I try to do. But Nick's great. Nick was uh, Nick was all first first team all all dugout. Well, all dugout and first team all like post locker room party guy. He was awesome. He was great. Music, dancing on the lockers. It was awesome. Awesome. Life a lifelong friend, you know. I feel like he needs to. And we had the we had the to meet you. Yes, I might have to go tomorrow. You said you had two tickets. Yeah, if Allie can't go, you can come with me. Yes. Yeah. Look at you. So you just gotta text Shameless. Allie. You gotta text Allie and say hey, you can't come to the game. I'll DM her. She sent me a very nice, sweet text before this te- before the show, so maybe she ah. wants to go. Yeah. Lloyd, sneak your way in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll still get in. <laughs> um, but 
Along those phone calls, I'll Doug, text Thompson said, Doug Thompson said, on my way. So he's coming in studio. DT Non. Which is going to be great to talk about everything that happened. And that's a great person to talk about the Blake Money stuff that I was talking to before the show. Is like, was he tipping? Was he giving away his pitches? What did you see? Because a pitcher knows that. A pitcher watching the game can see that. Before he gets here, let's just talk. We can just, we'll just bullshit around. Because I don't want to give away too much of the baseball talk before Doug. we get baseball conversations. Um... Breaking news, before the show, Corey Connor announced that he is transferring, and he's putting his name in the transfer portal, and moving away from mm-hmm. LSU. So, I know everybody was excited about Corey Kiner. I know in this room, people were bummed about Corey Kiner, and I understand he, was, he had showed flashes. I think that the writing was on the wall. I think that the running back room went from being very, very, very light to very strong. And I think that he saw his way, his playing time Dwindle. start to diminish and start to see that he wasn't going to play, so he transferred out. Uh, um, John Emery is too much of a variable. You never know with him. Right, but John, I think John Emery's like on a mission this year. I think that he is – everything that he's talked about and done, gained some weight, making his grades, doing all of these different things, like I think that he is putting himself in a position where he's like, look, I'm going to show you why I was so good coming out of high school. And you have Goodwin. Armani's been looking really good. Yeah. And Noah then you Kane. have Noah Kane coming in. Trey Bradford. Right. And Trey So you have you have guys that I think fit the skill set that Brian Kelly's looking for more than Corey Connor. Corey Connor was great. I'm not saying he's not a great player, but I think that he probably just got lost in the shuffle and there's just not enough there's not there's not enough balls on the field. I, I know you're gonna say something about that, Floyd. Um, there's, not enough, got lucky. there's not enough. There's not balls enough balls in your court. There's not. There's, there's only one football on the field. Yeah, not I mean, everybody can. Could not you imagine if there it. was more than one? Maybe we should create a football league. There's so many XFL. different football leagues now. Speaking of football leagues, Terrell Owens scored a touchdown in the player drive. What is it called? I don't even know what that is. Fan controlled football league. Score a touchdown. In the USL, USFL started, and one USFL guy got started? cut. You see the guy that got cut? Uh. Uh-uh. They found out he ate a pizza over a chicken salad. And they Ooh, cut him who from the found team. out? The Who's coach they? of a USFL team. Well, who was the coach? Uh, let me look this up. I saw it this is morning. The, that's where the New Orleans Breakers are, right? The USFL? Yeah. yeah. Did they win? They played yesterday. Or they won. They won. They won. They won? Yes. How the bad New was Orleans it? Breakers. I didn't watch. It looked okay. They have a guy that played had an NFL. I was on a practice squad and the, and the CFL. Mm-hmm. He was a linebacker. He had a pick six. They're trying some new stuff. Like, they have, like, the... Uh, the view from the player's angle. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. The USFL? Like the yeah, they have the camera. Dougie angle. Fresh. What up, dog? In the Boy. flesh. Welcome. Come on. Jump down. We're just bullshitting. How are we doing? How are you doing? Yeah, we, uh, he was, um... We're, we're an open forum here. We're just, we're talking everything. He played for the Pittsburgh team. Good. He played for what? Right there, right there. Right there, right there. As long as you have the mic in your face, that's all that matters. You know how that works. Sit this close to that cowbell. Yeah, you know how you know how this works. <laughs> Put the mic in there. There we go. We're talking lawyers, and we're talking about the New Orleans Breakers, the USFL team they played yesterday. They won, so if you're, oh. if you're following also, it, they also have like a drone camera. Uh, oh, yeah, they're just being the creative. Stuff. Well, the Sky Cam originated in the XFL, and then the NFL adopted it and stole it. But if they do the helmet cam, I'm kind of into that because do you remember the no old. Doubt. 2K? NFL 2K? Yeah. You had a little helmet cam. No, it was Madden. Madden. No, no, Madden, no, 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 Madden no, no, made no. you vision. No, no, no. Vision of vision like cone, thing. that's two yeah. different things. Yeah. NFL 2K, they put you in the helmet. In the helmet. And it was very hard. No, I think the real life helmet cam is going to be interesting. That would be awesome, right? You know, certainly make you know if you really want to play tackle football. Or not. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You find out real quick. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because there's some collisions out there. Collisions. Yeah. yeah. Breaking news. Car, car, yeah. They're tackling. Yeah, I mean, car wrecks are every play. No question. No question. Dude, thanks for coming in. Of course. I didn't know if you're gonna make it. I, I thought we were. I was like, man, I, I, I was. Uh, we had yep. Nick Pontiff I, on talking about the Wally Pontiff Classic tomorrow. We're gonna talk about it's the last one ever. If yeah, you didn't know that. So I we're gonna talk. That. We're gonna talk to that, about that a little bit. But I mean, yeah, hey, I walked in. I get showed up in the neighborhood yesterday. Yeah. And big, big game going. Yeah, Doug is recruiting, bro. He's he's mm-hmm. scouting. He was. They had a big. Well, he's, he's pivoted. They had a from, big game going on that they've been playing for hours, and I had to stop my car because. Wait, they were what right, kind of game? Golf game? Nope. No. no. Kids. Kids. Baseball. Easter wiffle ball matchup. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. he was on his golf cart scouting. He was recruiting. Pen and yeah. paper? No, not really. It's just some here. neighborhood kids. What I was really doing was policing it because, you know, 
they, they take bad swings, and I was trying to coach them a little bit, but they also throw the curveballs out there with the, with the, the tennis ball, and every time I have to bark at them a little bit. What is in your ear? throw fastballs, you know? Yeah, they, get, they get some scuffles? What is on, what's, what's well, there? that and the arbitrate, right? I have to be in the yeah, middle. The, you he want was to out, see a little scuffle. And, they, and they, I tell you, that group of kids specifically, they've, they've grown up together, but uh, I noticed when I did stop my cart, every time an altercation would start, all of them would look at me. And I'd be, He's out. <laughs> you know, the uh, orbiter. Yeah, yes. yeah, pretty much. Just to make sure no one uh, chased so, each other with a right. bat or anything like that. You've gone from chasing down umpires and getting kicked out of little league games to becoming an umpire of yeah, the neighborhood the, yeah, watch. Yeah, just trying to feel what they feel. You yeah. Know? <laughs> I mean, man, that's the fact that I even see you see the kids still doing that and out there playing for hours instead of just chilling on the video games yeah. is awesome to see. Anyway. Chilling so, on yeah. the video games. <laughs> Did you just age fifty five thousand yeah. years? Well, was we call them Fortnite game? nerds. Yeah, you know, chilling Fortnite on the video nerds. games. I mean, chilling like playing video games. That's Fucking the way to say it. Yes. You think an old man would say chilling on the video games? That's what you just yes. said. Yes. You think an old man would say chilling on the video games? On the video like games. Yeah. Well, oh well. I'll you're an old man. man. If you want, well, you're, I'm not a gamer. You're getting older. Yeah, I mean, I guess, Mikey. I, it's what? There's a reason my phone's not been out of college <laughs> a decade. A decade now. Uh, out of school. Yeah. Yeah, dude, it's getting years. real. Yeah, no, it's real. It's real. It's real. It's, it's not getting it. It's real. No, married, house. Hey, like, I dude, feel good, though. It's I feel real. like I'm still like I'm 25, though. So that's all I'm at. Yeah, you're still Rejuvenme.com. Um, yeah, Rejuvenme. But I haven't, I'm not on the Rejuvenme, but they are a sponsor. So maybe you can get on the Rejuvenme. Maybe they'll help you have 45 stuff. Lucky man. Lucky um, man. All right, I I'll know your time is valuable. No, you're good. You're a busy man. I want to talk a little bit about LSU because I have a few mm-hmm. thoughts. Obviously, we are invested more than just the casual fan, right? You've played sure. in it. I've played there. We've been through the ups and downs of LSU baseball. More ups than downs. You more ups and downs. More ups than I have probably because we had, I didn't make the postseason. This is probably if they don't make the postseason this year, which I think they will. Yeah. 2011 was the last time they didn't make it, and I was my last year at LSU. Oh wow! So, I didn't yeah, know that. Not good. We're 36 and 20. We should have made it. That's a whole. That's a that's a whole con- different conversation. But watching these games. It feels like something's there's there's something missing. Oh, you're ringing. You're no, you're busy, good. Busy man. No, you're good. There's something missing, right? Obviously, defense has been very subpar. Yeah. I think that even with the poor fielding percentage, I think they probably could have had more errors registered mm-hmm. to them throughout the course of the year. Um, what have you seen from the baseball? Not from the I'm calling the games and have to be not very you mean. To be objective. Yes. Now, give me the yep. LSU baseball, Doug Thompson, that pitched and won a college World Series, and where yeah. do you see LSU baseball now? Well, I was just looking before I came here, the standings, right? Uh, if you look in the SEC, the third-ranked team in the SEC, in, in the West, or in the East, sorry, is Vanderbilt. Right. And they're 7-8. and eight. Yep. You know, LSU's 7-8. and eight. There's three teams ahead, ahead of LSU, all 8-7. and seven. Mm-hmm. And there's three teams in the conference with winning records. Right. So you also have some five and tens in there and some, some six and nines. And uh, it'd be the first thing I would say is be a lot worse in their shoes. No doubt. Right. Uh, like Ole Miss and Mississippi State will play this weekend. And for the first time, gosh, in a very long time uh, or for a, a very few uh, number of times over the past decade or so, it won't mean anything. Right. I mean, one of them is five and nine. The other is, you know, six and ten. Who cares? You know, Um but it, it can really swing in any direction. Tomorrow, if the SEC tournament were to start, LSU would be the seventh-ranked team in the conference, seventh-ranked seventh seed right. in the in the tournament. So it's certainly not time to hit the urgency button. No doubt. And you and I have both seen it's almost every year the same story. I mean, it really has been this kind of story the last ten years. Oh, they're not going to make it. They're not going to be that good. They're not going to be able to compete. And then right then at the end of the season, they're playing their best baseball. <clears throat> that was one of Paul Maneri's greatest attributes, mm-hmm. I thought, I was his ability to uh, tinker and tinker and at the end of the season have his best product on the field. And um, we've seen some tinkering. You know, you've seen Stevenson's out there now. Mm-hmm. Um, and, Both and, freshmen, right? And Pearson. Pearson yeah. um, and, and others. And I, and I think there could be even more. Um uh, because you, you have to keep making adjustments until, uh, until you get it right. Yep. So um, don't count out LSU. They're right, yeah. they're right in the thick of it. Their pitching's good enough to compete. Um, I personally would like to question. see uh, Grant Taylor mm-hmm. and Sammy Dutton get mm-hmm. their own starts mm-hmm. in, instead of the piggyback because yep. I like the way they both go at it. It's kind of like a, 
Uh, they're not really scared to fail. Um, and they've pitched in big situations now. Uh, they've kind of almost graduated because usually freshmen that do pitch really don't maybe get tested in the big moments, but they've pitched against some, some pretty good competition. Um, uh, but, you know, with Gervais and, and Razelman down there, that velocity really, you know, creates pressure. And, um, you know, they, they've shown the ability to, to dominate, yep. um, even though, you know, maybe their off-speed pitches aren't as good as if they were, they, they may not be here type right. thing. Right. Uh, so I think they have some tools is the point to make a nice little run. Uh, the injury bug hasn't really um, favored them, but on the same note, it's not really crippled them yet either, like like right. Mississippi State for Trevor example. Trevor Morgan's fine. So, Trevor Morgan's good. Um, yeah. So, Morgan's Trevor Morgan's fine. Morgan's fine. That's well, I mean, that was a little scary. To well, he see told me. I, I said something. He came back at us on Twitter and said, LOL, Morgan's fine. He third personed himself. He third really? Before, before he the weekend, I'm like, hey, bro, I want you to be fine. I wouldn't say anything bad. And he's... He's gimpy. He hurt. He's hurting. Ricky Obviously, got, Ricky got, got tenure. I mean, he, he got, got he had a, he had a knee brace on top of the pants. That's I've never seen that look. before. Yeah, I've never seen it before either. It's aggressive, but yeah. I, like, whatever you whatever need, gets you out whatever there. you need, I'm okay with it. It's just aggressive. I've never seen the. It's like a cup on the outside of the pants. Yeah, I've never seen that. <laughs> but I think in years past, our bullpen has been the weak link, right? Like it hasn't been as deep. This year, it's opposite, mm -hmm. right? Starting pitching hasn't been great, but bullpen has been nails. Mikhail's mm -hmm. been good. Last few weeks, two, three, four weeks, Mikel's been solid. He's been good. He gets us, gives us a chance to win. Blake Money has been very. He started the season hot. I had this thing with the his thing wrist. happened. Yeah. The thing. <laughs> since then, the since the wrist. The thing, thing happened, right? But here's what I want to ask, and I want to go into because you're a pitcher. I'm watching the game on Friday, and I'm watching Blake Money pitch, mm -hmm. and he's got good stuff. He's got strikeout stuff. He struck out one guy. And he basically gave up five, six home runs. Without, if the win wasn't there, he probably gave up at least five home runs, right? He only gave up four runs, gave six and two-thirds, great. It seemed to me, being a baseball player and being a hitter, that they had his pitches. I don't know if he was tipping. I don't know if they were getting something from the catcher. I don't know what was because he wasn't striking anybody out. Nobody was fooled or anything, and they were titting everything, mm -hmm. right? And he was making good pitches. Right, and they were on it like fastballs off the plate away were getting barreled. Hammered. Mm -hmm. Right, I know the wind was blowing out to left. Is that something that maybe that you saw? Like as a pitcher, did you notice that, or am I just overthinking that? One? Well, I didn't watch, but I did listen, and I heard multiple times on the home. First of all, there's some good and bad there. He gave right. up three or four home runs, but only four runs, right? And, and they were solo home runs, so. You know, when you're not walking them, that helps, right? And and when you get into those SEC lineups, sometimes no you're going to give up three or four home runs in a game. And mm -hmm. it's about tough skin and keep fighting. And he mm -hmm. does that well, right? Uh, so, for me, um, I didn't see it. I'd have to see it to see if they were pitches off the plate, what the count was. I have noticed this year um, with with Money, uh, with Hilliard, with all of them. The 0 2 and 1-2, we miss over the plate a lot. Yeah. Uh, and I know they're amateurs, right. and I, I missed over the plate a lot too. Right. O two and one right. two, but you know, you know, I was raised as a twelve year old kid. O two one two, uh, they may be able to hit the ball, but it's certainly not going to be hard anywhere. Right, right. And and for me, like I had to bounce that curveball O two, and then maybe it again one and two, um, and and I had to hit that outside corner or just off the outside edge. And I've seen a lot of those mistakes this year. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, you know, I don't know if that's a matter of just these guys being amateur pitchers and making mistakes like you do, or there's, a, you know, there's a problem with the system of the way that we're setting up and calling pitches. I haven't really dug that deep, but, um, look for me, the starting three, <clears throat> like they may not necessarily be the most talented three pitchers. Well, I guess on the starting staff. four, right? Cause the Sunday is a piggyback. Well, yeah, but I'm saying if I'm starting, if I'm coaching one of the, you know, an SEC team. I just need to know the most important thing to me about those three spots are just I know what I'm going to get. Right. Like this guy's going to battle for me and keep me in the game until the sixth inning. He's going to be strong in the first. He's going to go down a little bit in the second, third, but he's going to pick back up in the fourth, fifth, and sixth. If I know that and I can take it to mm -hmm. the bank, he's going to start on, on the weekend yep. for me. If it's a guy that's like going to get in trouble with walks and be a little erratic, I don't know if I can trust him to be a starter. Or if stuff goes wrong, he can't he can't he can't lock it back in and battle through it. Like that's a that's a big thing because you've talked about how I mean we talked about before we were talking. Nick Ponoff was on 
just did a video call with us, and we're talking about how much how how much the parity in college and SEC, but not just college, but SEC. Oh yeah. Right. Arkansas is running away with the West. Right. You can basically chalk that up. They're probably going to win the West. They're eleven and four, whatever. Tennessee's going to win the East. They're going to win the SEC. Like the whole SEC, but like both conf- like both sides. Those are probably the two teams that That's are going right. to. Second place and both are, are wide open. It's not time to panic, like you said, no. but there has got to be some sort of adjustment or sense of urgency. And I don't know if that comes from because not talent it has nothing to do with talent, right? As far as like the errors, because on Friday, on Thursday, we only had one registered error, but we probably should have had three or four for mm-hmm. the game, right? And it just plays that. And if you ask these guys, they said they should have made those plays. I should have made that play, right? And I'm not trashing anybody. No, but it's starting to wear on the pitching staff. But there's got to exactly, and there's yeah. got to be a. Fuck it. We got to fix this. <laughs> you know, no, there, like, there, there absolutely has to be that foot in the sand moment because right. it's starting to become, uh, it's starting to kind of creep everywhere, right? And, and it's the uncertainty when the ball hits the bat, right? Mm-hmm. The more you can, you can tell everybody in the world that you want the ball to be hit to you, but you, only you hear that little voice inside, right? And, and I, I wasn't really aware of defensive slumps. And, uh, you know, Joe Lawrence, a, a good buddy of mine, he was a, a, one of the owners of Marucci until recently. He was talking like, no, this is absolutely a real thing. And it gets to a point where you feel them all in practice or everything feels normal. And then you get in that game situation and that first bobble. Now it's really yep. in your head. Right. Yep. And you're really thinking about it. So there has to be that foot in the sand moment where the team just uh, becomes not scared to fail. Uh, you can't be scared to fail and play baseball, yeah. right? You can't be thinking uh, – you've got to be praying that the balls hit to you even after the air, right? Like that's what we teach kids at a young, young, young age. Right. Um, so hopefully that moment happens. And that usually happens in the locker room. It usually happens in a player-only type meeting. But this is for that team to decide. Ex- exactly. Right? And it happens every year. And somebody's going to eventually do it. And maybe the first effort won't, won't right. work. But somebody's going to continue to do that. Or they're not going to be – they're not going to be competitive at the end. And that's I, exactly what me and Nick were talking about is you always find – every team always has that person or people, leaders, that people can look to and respect enough to where when they talk and they say something or they do something, it resonates with everybody. Yeah. And I don't know if they've found that person yet on this team. And it's, mid, it's halfway through the SEC, and I think that's really the only way – who do you, you think it, it was supposed to be? I mean, maybe Beloso, maybe Duga, but team Duga's leader. been Duga's been leader. banged up. Well, that's what I'm asking. Who do you think the team leader is at this point? Because nobody. What we've had one seminal moment with Blake Money, and who was it that Bianco. kind of got him at Bianco? Bianco. Yep. I think Vitmeyer. I think Vit- Beloso. Yeah, right. I think those guys. Are, but they're in know. the dugout. You know, they're not there. They're they're hanging out. They're they're warming up. No, you know, they're, they're, it's they're hard the, for a pitcher to have I that mean, role. They're, they're, I think it's about the guy that's been around the longest usually gets that role. And, you know, I think Vitmeyer's kind of the alpha in the whole locker room. And Vim, I love Vitmeyer. I think yeah, he is awesome. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's the kind of leadership that they're yeah. going to need to step up. But that's the type of leadership that all championship teams yep. need to step up, right? And sometimes it just doesn't happen, right? They don't necessarily have that vocal leader that – Which makes them not – the reason why they're not a championship – like not this team, but exactly. team, that team who doesn't win, that's why they're not a championship caliber yeah. team because they don't have that. Exactly. When I played at LSU, and it's somewhat, you know, famous at this point, but Coach Bertman every year had an FU speech, right? It was after some game, and it was unpredictable, and nobody knew when it was coming, but it was coming. And every single year it happened once. And um, that was like a game where you're supposed to win it maybe, and you, and you win it 10 to 9, but you make some errors late. And, and uh, you know, Grambling almost does come back and get the win. I don't know, right? But it could have been that moment, but it's always unexpected. And Coach Burton would take everyone and take every single guy on the team, coaches, and trainers, and everyone, and tell them why they could, yep. you know, go F themselves. Maneri did the same basically. thing. Did and the same and thing. Th- that was this come to Jesus moment about, like, if we're going to be a championship team, things like that are unacceptable. And nobody here is big enough. And all of you have a reason of something that you can work on to get us better. Um, and, and, but then again, sometimes, you know, I play for a championship coach. I mean, that's, that, that happened every year. It's part of his system, yep. if you will. But a lot of times, like Mikey's saying, like that happens internally. It could happen in, a, in an apartment right. where guys are sitting around and somebody just stands up and throws a chair through a wall and, and, and it ends right there. But, um, you know, there's all kinds of things. And, and I, I was in the minor leagues once. I had a manager named Alan Cockrell who was – Recent, up until recently, the, the hitting coach for the Yankees, one the of my cock. favorite managers. 
he was actually the, the pick uh, either before or after Mark McGuire in, in the first round. When, anyway, great guy. Right. Played Tennessee quarterback at Tennessee, and he was also okay. a shortstop. He was a stud. Yeah. Um, one day he walks in the locker room wearing uh, Frederick playing the Orioles, and he told everybody, grab something out of your locker and come outside right now. He didn't really tell. He didn't give any. And everybody comes out. Guys have bats and batting gloves. He's like, throw it into this dumpster. And he put, you know, uh, gas in it. And we lit it. And he, it just burned. Right. And some guys are like, my glove. You know, whatever. And, and he's like, I don't Picture care. Picture my life. We've got to burn something you care about, whatever. And, and then we ended up going like an eight-game right. industry. Did that have anything to do with burning? No, it didn't. But it's, it's not about what you believe in. Right. Like, remember the possum year? Mm -hmm. Right. Like it wasn't like the possum thing. Right. When they had the possum. That I, yeah. Right on not, the field. Like the possum, of course, didn't win games, but it's not about what you believe. It's a matter that you believe it and yeah, that everybody to bring it to people. Something a turning everyone, point. Exactly. Something. Everybody has to be. There's got to be synergy on something. Yep. Right. And if it's the focus is to win a championship, then again, at LSU, you have the tools. You have the greatest fans in the country. You have everything that you need to tap into it. It's a matter of when you do, right? Because sometimes it can be a little too late. But usually in this program, when it's that mathematical, like they better start winning some games, which it's not yet. Yeah. LSU does some pretty special things coming down the home stretch no when doubt. the weather gets warm, the box gets packed. Things change. So I'm hoping for that this year. 100%. And I think, you're, I think you hit, hit the nail on the head. Like you don't need – like sometimes Maneri would do the exact same thing, right? He would go down the list of players. It doesn't matter if you were hitting – Third the only, hole, right. The only person, the only time this has ever happened where he couldn't have anything to say, we, it was 2010, we were going through a bad stretch. I think we lost seven straight. And he was going down a list, and he hammered me, and he hammered Blake Dean, he hammered, and he got to Micah Gibbs, and Micah Gibbs at the time was hitting 430. And he said, and Micah, and Austin. And he yeah. just couldn't say anything, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> he would go to through, yeah. and, and his whole thing was, and after the fact, he would, he gave us something, whether we had to motherfuck him and that brought us together, or we had something to rally the troops, right, for, on something. Whether everybody needed to hate him, that's to right. hate him, that's what they needed to do. If everybody needed to laugh, that's what they needed to do, right? And for me, the best teams that I've ever played on in professional baseball, college baseball, wherever, you had the guys on the team. The players, like your boys, the guys you'd go out with, the guys that you would go to school with, the guys that you would party with, whatever you want to do. Tag team. You had... Wrestle. What? Tag team wrestling. Okay. <laughs> okay. But you had those guys, you had those guys that you didn't want to disappoint, right? Like, and that was the thing. Like, you had the guys on the team, like, I need to play hard for them because I respect him enough to where I... Ian Kinzer was that guy for me. In Detroit, and I tell them this all the time, like, "Hey, dude, when I got here, I was lost. I lost that competitive nature from college to professional baseball because I got caught up in the whole thing. But when I got here and I was on this team, you made me like realize what I loved about baseball, and it was because I wanted to play hard for you. Like, I wanted to not only did I want to play hard for myself, but I wanted to not disappoint you. And I don't think that they have that yet. At the another thing, Skip Bergman did at the beginning of every season. Unbeknownst to a newcomer, you would, you know, go through the deal for two or three weeks, practice in your classes and whatnot. He would literally call you off the field during practice and you know, bring it in the office. <clears throat> and he'd sit down with you and say, how's the family? How's your grades? How's the classes? Your, your roommates, et cetera. And then all of a sudden, he'd throw this big rope over the edge of the desk. It was a you know, big boat rope that you would tie a huge boat to a, a dock with. And he would say, hold the rope grab the other side of the rope over the side of his desk. And, you know, you don't know this as a newcomer. That was also a special part of the story because, right. of course, somebody could ruin it and be like, hey, when this happens, this is what you do. But nobody ever did. And he'd say, uh, look, imagine you're hand in, uh, hanging over the side of a mountain, right? And uh, you got one guy out on the field holding the other side. Who would it be? And it was a little tricky, kind of tricky with the words there. And, of course, you'd answer a guy. Right. And I answered the guy that, you know, was a, I knew the longest that I right. knew a couple of years before LSU. Right. I knew him the best, you know, whatever. Right. Anyway, it's a great answer, but it's wrong. The, the real when, when you can say. Any of them. Yeah, we got a chance to win the national championship. No doubt. And it's not too late. But the truth of the matter is when you trust any guy out on that field to hold the end of that rope because, you know, they're not going to let go. Yep. 
then we'll do it. And the, the way the, the story kind of goes, Skip said this now since 84, and it was kind of a punchline of a joke. Guys were too cool and <clears throat> didn't really buy into it. Then it got to a big moment. I want to say it was 1986, and LSU was an out away from winning it all. And the ground balls hit to shortstop, and the shortstop didn't make the play, and they had to go to extra innings. And I'm, I might be butchering the, the, the meat and potatoes or the, the data, or the stat, or the, the actual specific details, but – at some point in the game, it gets to that same situation. And they're, they're, here they are again, two outs. They got a chance to win the game. And Skip would say that the first ground ball that was hit, he noticed nobody came off the dugout bench. They were just waiting for the guy to make the play. And they didn't fire off the bench because right. they knew. And then at some point later in the game, a guy named Robbie Smith, his numbers retired at LSU. And Skip would say this is the reason why. He was, just, he was killed in a uh, – he was a police officer and he was uh, killed by a drunk driver on a, on a routine – traffic stop but uh, he's number 19 uh the same way as mcdonald so right. it used to at the old box say smith and mcdonald but it, robbie smith's number was also retired so um robbie smith who was just a weekday pitcher and this is four or five years after skip's been doing the rope thing but it's a joke and mm -hmm. people think it's kind of funny and hey hold the rope but robbie smith has the has the courage to stand on the top of the dugout and scream out to the pitcher hey hold the rope Right. And the pitcher stepped off and looked at the catcher and hold the rope and the catcher to first base and everybody screamed like a movie at each scene. other, like literally. Yeah. And then the right. ground balls hit and Coach Burton would say, as soon as the ball left the bat, the dugout exploded off the, the benches and we're halfway on the field when the ball was over to first base. And right. he, he, Skip would tell you that is when LSU baseball, mm -hmm. that moment is when it was born right. because it became, it wasn't a punchline anymore. It was like something that was real and something that guys could understand. Like yeah. all I have to do is believe in each guy. I have to forge a relationship enough with each guy to be able to not let go of that rope. My son asks me all the time, like, Dad, do you love all your team? Are your teammates great guys? And I'm like, to me, they were. Yeah. Right? There's some guys that are different that you play ball with. They're just different. They're not like you. They weren't raised like you. Ronnie Ranch. But, but you love them. Ronnie Ranch, for example. <laughs> Ronnie Ranch, for example. It's a great example. But you know what? I would hold that rope as long as I could for Ronnie Ranch. Right? right. And he would do the same for me, and there's no question about that. We right. weren't even on the same team. But the point is, like what you're saying, that, that has to exist on a championship team. Mm -hmm. If you have a bad apple or two, or an eye guy or two, or a disgruntled player or two that thinks they should be in there, you know, it's, it's just not going to work. Right? right? Even the guys that aren't getting their shot have to be holding that rope during the game or – Championships just aren't possible. I'm a true believer of that. I 100% agree, and that's I mean that's something that shows. I mean, that's for true. sure, and that's that's something that's not taught. You can't teach it. Like you can preach it, and you can put these guys in a position to understand it. But if they don't believe it, and if they don't have buy into that, like you said, the whole buy in thing, then it's never going to take. And look, Jay's in a Jay. I think Jay's going to be great. I think he's doing a great job, and that's he's going to create his own culture and his own chemistry within the team and the players, but it's up to the players to take that control of that within themselves and say, okay, this is time. It's time for us to create that culture within the, the, the whole the road moment. Yeah. Well, it's true. And you look down the road 20 years or 10 years. I mean, these guys eat every year still for a dinner of the 2009 team. That's nothing to do with the championship. Right. He doesn't probably have a text thread with his 2011 team. I have a text thread with my 1997 team. I also have a text thread with a group of guys in the minor leagues that also happen to be on a championship team together. Right. So for me, I, I go back to it's about the relationships internally. Like you really have to love each other, even even the guys that everybody else doesn't love. Ele. Right? Yeah. You have to love those. You have to love each other to win championships. And and when you do, and when you sell out like that to each other. You get 20-year-long relationships, no and you're meeting at Rafino's every Christmas to go sit down in a room and talk with each other about now their kids and their lives and their wives and things of that nature, and you can't replace that, right? So um, I don't – look, the one mistake, I think Jay Johnson is the man for the job. I've, I've gotten to know him pretty well. He is committed. No doubt. I mean, he works his ass off. He, he, you're, I mean, in terms of grinding it out and thinking about this and, and being passionate to be excellent, this is the perfect guy. Uh, the one thing I wish, though, and maybe not even pitching coach, hitting coach, but I think that culture for LSU is a big, big, big thing, right? I think that you, like, to, to understand what this means to people, you have to understand the last 30 years of what's gone on on that field and the one down the street from it. And you have to really 
have a certain respect for it. Like you talked about when we opened, it's a little different for you and I, of course, and hundreds of other guys that played on that field, right? We want to see, just like the football guys, really, you know, and alumni in general care about football and baseball as a whole, right? Um, I, I really think that there needs to be someone in that dugout that can, that can help them understand certain things that are traditional, Right, and, and that can tell Jay Johnson, I plan on it. Hey, don't worry. There's a steamroll of emotion and energy coming your way. It's right about when school lets out. It's right when the program needs it to. I've always seen a tick up. I've been doing the baseball the radio thing for seven or eight years now. But I've always seen the minute those kids are done taking tests, it's all different. It's all different. You're in the outfield. You have the girls are showing up in the outfield with the shorter jean shorts and the spaghetti so strap sundresses. And you're, you smell the alcohol when they're tailgating. And Two nobody has drinks. anything. And you're like, And you don't have sleep. Bleh. And you don't have those yeah. commitments. And these kids get focused at 9 a.m. They're thinking about going to the field and getting at the field and being at the field with their It becomes buddies. a job. It becomes a real, it's a minor league life. Well, as I soon think, as they're done with school. And I school. think, to your point, I think what else happens is not just on the field. It's the off the field stuff, right? Like you don't have class. That's right. You don't have any. So what you do is, what do you do? Hey boys, let's. What pool are we going to? Let's go hang to out. Hang out, right? So you go hang out at the pool, and now you have a group of four guys. That turns into six. That turns into eight. Now all of a sudden, it's a team pool party, and this is where we're going every Monday on our off day. And this now we're the Backstreet do, Boys, right? And you're gonna go hang out, and you're gonna be around each other, and that's how you create that, right? It's the you only don't create way. that in the locker room. You create that off the field. It's the only way. Only way. Yeah. Um, and that's baseball. Like I know it's every team sport, but baseball has that somewhat just yeah. different kind of chemistry you have to have in order to win it, it feels like. Because you're around each other so much. And when you start making time like off the field to hang out, that's when you probably have something that's truly special. Yeah. Well, it's different in baseball because the game has no time limit. Yeah. So as you football, know, right? Like, I mean, yeah. I mean, as any ball player knows, like you've got, bro, you've got to love these guys to be out there battling with them four and a half hours into a game. Like you've got to still have that commitment. And the only way to keep that commitment is to make that commitment, not about yourself. Right. Right. To make it to where like, I'm not going to let these guys down. There's no way I'm going to do that. Right. And that's the only way. Yep. No doubt. And the things that we did were like, even if you didn't want, even if you had other plans, right? We had a team party after Sunday games, a f Sunday fun day, right? It used to be at Mellow. We don't do it. At, there's no Mellow anymore. So mm -hmm. like if we even, if we had an apartment or whoever's house, whoever it was, hey, everybody needs to show up. If you got something else, that's fine. You've got to show up. 10 minutes, five minutes, show 15 minutes, two hours, show up and then you can go. And but if you just get them in the door, they stay, they have fun, and that that grows it. And that is something that is created through veteran guys, guys who have been through it. If you've never been through that or experienced that, it's hard to pass that down. And I think that – I'm not saying that they don't have that because I don't know. I don't hang out with these guys outside of watching them on TV and knowing a couple of them a little bit. So they may have some of those things, and they, they may still be working through it. But that is how you create – a winning culture and like you said they're seven and eight they have an opportunity they're to, right look, in the middle of it. they're gonna play at missouri this weekend sweet at home i don't want you don't, i'm not gonna drop the sweep but like they should win that series mm -hmm. if not win all three games they should win two of those three right then you now you have a winning record or a 500 record you could be 10 and 8 right you could be 10 and 8 by the end of the weekend so now you're probably you second, second third in the sec, in the right. SEC. You go ahead and you make a run, I you get 15 and 15 in, the, in conference. Yeah. You're in a position to probably host a regional at that point. And then whatever, you get postseason play in the box, anything can happen. Yeah, 16, 17 wins, I think, get you, you know, a, a regional uh, for sure. But 15 certainly playing, maybe less than 15, right. certainly a chance to play in the postseason. Because you play Alabama, yeah. they're ahead of you in the standings. So you still have to play them. You play Ole Miss, they're struggling, but Ole Miss can beat you. But you, like it's just there's a lot of there's a lot of things that can go the right the way of the right way for them. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, look to to just kind of emphasize what you're saying about the teams being close. Like the the championship teams I happen to be a part of in college and then at, at, at you know in the minor leagues and whatnot. They also partied the best. Yep. Like some of the best times in my life no happened doubt. to be those years with those guys, and it had nothing mm. to do with the champ. We didn't know we were going to win championships during the year, right? But 
those teams happen to also have an incredible ability to know when the silliness stops. Mm -hmm. And then like 20 minutes before the game, like as a relief pitcher in the minor leagues who was trying to, who was mostly not really that (laughs) focused until I had to go in. Like it was heads up time around those teams because there's some dudes that are like, you know, feeling it. You know, they've got the wrist tape and the forearms are pumping and they're fired up to go out there and play. And it's like, it's not time. And it was the same way at LSU. 15, 20 minutes before the game, all the silliness is over. Now mm-hmm. it's about getting locked in, getting ready to kick somebody's ass. You, know? the, so the you fun, have to have the ability to do those two things. Yeah, right? because the, the fun's important. It's important. You have to enjoy each other, but it can't be silly throughout the game. It can't be all fun. It can't be a bunch of laughter. You have to go out there and get ready for battle, and that vibe has to be real. It can't be yeah. manufactured. And the people that have to start that vibe, back to the alphas, the guys that have been around, Vitmeyer and those guys, it's got to be for them – all business 15, 10, 15 minutes before the game because everybody else is watching their vibe. You know what I mean? Yeah, no doubt. And when we were when we were playing, and I don't, I, ever, I hate being like, oh, when it was my back in my day, like because it's not it, the game's different. Well, but, it's significant because you won a championship, I think, right? And right? the mentality of it is the same, right? I don't care how much the game changes on the field as far as like how they want to. Foot back. I don't care about any of that. Like all of that is fine. Like the game plays different. The way the game is played is a little bit different. But the mentality never changes. The mentality of being a competitor and winning and being successful, that never changes, right. right? And so when we were playing, we had our fun times, but we always wanted to fight people. Like, whether we were actually going to fight them, like, that was the mode. Like, when it's game time, I am going to beat you. Either way. If yeah. you want to run out on that field and right. meet in the middle, let's do that. Right. Right. That You have to have that type of mentality to play baseball because, I mean, you have to be somewhat sadistic a little bit crazy to play because you play during the hottest time of the year. The games have no time limit. You're playing more frequently than everyone else. You fail all the time. you're dealing with so much failure. I mean, 30% of the time, you know, you can be really rolling that pole. We talked about this with you last year. You're hitting balls on the button for a month straight and it's still hitting 260. (laughs) I mean, that takes like an uber, uber tough individual to be able to battle that. And for pitchers, like, you're trying to throw a strike every time. You don't. (laughs) <laughs> you miss a lot. And sometimes you do throw the perfect pitch and the guy hits a double off the right center field wall. Like more so than any other sport, the individual has to be so much tougher to play this sport and deal with so much more failure. Therefore, there's no other way to go about it than the same way a UFC fighter or a boxer would go into a boxing match. That type of intensity is absolutely required. And I'm not saying it's not for other sports. It is just for longer durations of time in right. baseball. You know? Right. And it's just you have a lot more time with your thoughts. Oh, man. So, like, it makes it... When you're lot. 0 for 3 sitting out in center field... Naked. And you're, and you're you know, you're, one time the umpire called strike three, that was bullshit. The next right. time you swung <laughs> through a bad pitch. The next time the pitcher just beat you. But guess what? In the ninth inning, you're going to come up with a guy at second, down a run, and have two outs. And you're going to have to somehow be tough enough to get through all of that other stuff and get the big hit right now. Hold yeah. the rope. Yep. It's unusual. It's yep. different, right? It is different, and I think it's what make it's what makes baseball such a beautiful game. Oh, it's the best. Um, Don't get me started. It's the greatest. <laughs> I mean, game I, that's why I wanted you to come in because, like, we we have these conversations all the time, right? Sure. We tell stories, we talk about how we experienced it, what we experienced, and you played in the minor leagues long before I got there, mm-hmm. and a lot of the stories are the same. Same thing. It doesn't matter. It doesn't, no matter how much the game changes, it's time. The experiences yeah. and all of those things stay the same. It's just maybe it happens a little differently. So I wanted you in here so we could talk, not just LSU baseball, but talk about like what goes into it behind the scenes. That's kind of what we try to do here. Like I'll talk, I'll, if you want to talk ball all day, I'll, I can, I'll critique, I'll, I'll do whatever. I'll tell you what went wrong, what went right. But that's not a lot of times in baseball. That isn't, that doesn't tell you any of the story. That just tells you the surface. What happens is the stuff that goes behind the scenes. And that's what creates that's what makes baseball special, and that's why I want to get you in here to talk about it, right? Anytime. And the next, well, before I let you go, the next, they play Missouri this weekend. They have the Wally Pontiff Classic mm-hmm. um, tomorrow. You knew Wally. Of course. So I, I gave Nick the platform to talk about, you know, it being the last one. And, you know, but a lot of people now, and he made a great, very good point. He was 20, 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. He passed away, right? So a lot of these guys at LSU weren't even born yet, right. or they're one, no or two, right. right? Like they have no idea the impact he had, how good of a player he was, how good of a person he was. Mm-hmm. You know him, so if you want to give your best Wally Pana story, this is I'm trying to like 
kind of bring some awareness to the game because I'm going to the game. Yeah. But it, well, he's just the most you know one of the most humble kids I met. Comes right. from a great family, obviously. But I mean, look, I mean, if you've got a daughter or a sister, this is the type of guy you want him to. You want your daughter or sister to marry. I mean, he's uh, as good a guy on the field as he was off the field, a leader, um, you know, uh, very humble, uh, born to be a Tiger. I mean, the kid had a purple and gold pacifier in his mouth. Right. There's no question about it. Um, and, you know, I mean, it, he was just so humble in a way. I remember a game, uh, I went to a basketball game, and I was gone from LSU, and I saw Wally uh, in the, in the PMAC uh, lobby, full uni. Right. And I was like, what, <laughs> what's going on, Big Daddy? And he said, I've got to face Brittany Sneed, who was a, she was, un, in fact, I think she's in the Hall of Fame. Um, she was money. I mean, like, led the country in strikeouts and softball pitcher. Right. And they were doing this on the court, packed oh, PMAC. shit. Packed, okay. I'd be nervous. With a net behind Wally set up, but no netting around them. And they were using a real ball. And I'm thinking, like, dude, if Wally hits one of these balls, like, somebody's going to get hurt. Right. You know, whatever. But I guess the people that put it together knew that Wally wasn't going to get hurt. Wasn't going to sniff it. No. (laughs) He went out there and took three big cuts, not even close, and she struck him out. And I saw him after. He was just smiling away. He's like, I got no shot. I could stay out there all night. They could put whatever ball they want. They could let her throw golf balls. I'm not even going to sniff one. I was like, wow, it was that tough. He was like, yeah. yeah. But, again, just a big That's smile awesome. on his face. He's yeah. just a super guy. He's a lot like Nick. You yeah. know, and you know Mr. Wally. You probably got a, a happy Easter, oh, love yeah. you, big guy text oh, yeah. the same way I did. And um, they're, uh, they're just incredible people. And Wally is, uh, of course, sorely missed by many, many mm-hmm. people every day. Man, I appreciate it. Of I, mean, I, I didn't know him personally, but obviously I know Nick. So I kind of felt like I knew him based you off do. of knowing the family, right? Yeah. yeah. So uh, I always liked playing in those games. I kind of just feel like I had a little more juice because sure. it was for something bigger than me. And um, I'll be there watching. It's the last one. Enjoying it. I'm sure you'll be there. I don't know if you're calling there. Are you calling the game? Um, to, well, tomorrow night I had a former teammate's uh, dad pass away. So I may not make tomorrow night. Uh, but I Are you calling not. the games this weekend? I'll call Thursday and Friday, and then my oh, son. Oh, so it's another Thursday, Friday, Saturday? It's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Saturday, unfortunately, for me at least, is the 25th reunion of the 1997 National Championship. Wow, you're getting old. I'll miss it, I know. Look at all this gray hair. <laughs> I'll miss it because uh, my two kids play in Beaumont uh, Saturday, so I'll, I'll call the game. Just go get kicked out. I'll call the back. game. Well, I'll call the game Friday night in Baton Rouge and then leave after the game and head to Beaumont for an 8 a.m. start, so... Even if I got kicked out of that one, I'd, I have three really other games bad. I'd have to be in that oh, day. Man. That's tough. That's do, you, do you think that this may be the, like the Pontiff Classic, the last one that it being, could be that like moment that the LSU baseball team is looking for for somebody to realize, like, look, look um, this is tradition, this is the thing? Look, I don't think so. Because they're looking for the moment that you're all talking about. I don't, I don't think so because I don't think that they Under- grasp understand like, the It goes back to that, not having somebody on that staff that like gets it. You yeah. know, that gets what's tradition, what's what's not necessarily I mean, tradition. We used, used, used to watch we used to watch their highlight videos before and, our games. And likewise for me. I mean, um every game started with a at some point you're gonna watch a, a five to ten minute video. Back then it was awesome. Uh you know, especially back then because there was no nothing really like this. But you know, it'd be like Rocky three, the movie, right. and there's these scenes from Rocky three that would phase into something very relative for us, or whether it was somebody just hitting a bomb every punch yeah. that Rocky would land. And at the end, in the beginning of all those videos, were the championship celebrations for ninety one dog piles. 90, so for me in ninety seven, like I had seen these championships, like you know, happen, and and then you see these things later, and you see in two thousand, uh, Ryan Terrio slides. Throwing the helmet. And throws the helmet yeah. like um, um, the uh, okay, Armando Rios did yep. in Omaha. Yep. And then Lou throws his glove up yep. in the air, very similar to how I did in 1997. Right. When you see Skip was very, very, uh, Coach Burton was very serious on uh, visualizing things and seeing yourself succeed. So we saw these things all the time. And I do think that it would be very helpful for this team to – see those championship yeah. celebrations for all the years 
just to get that in their mind of what's the expectation and what's possible. Well, to get where you're going, you have to know where you've been. I got it right this time. Oh, what a nails. Man, man, if somebody had ever said that before. You know what I mean? Know. So, like, if you don't know where they've been or where LSU has been, right. it's hard to get to get, get to be where you need to go, right? That's so, like, right. if you don't know who Mikey Matuk is, we got a right. problem. If you Todd don't know, Walker. if you, I mean, I was watching highlights. Lyle Mouton was hitting homers and putting his hand up in Omaha. I'm like, that is awesome. Like, you're watching these stuff, and you're like, damn, these guys did the exact same thing that we're doing in 2022. They just didn't have social media and all this stuff to where it's more public. Like, you missed all of it because a lot of it wasn't, uh-oh, we got some lawn, lawn work going. A-Bear's lawn and maintenance. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But, like, you – like. Those like the the stuff that's going like that the stuff that's happening on the field now like the swag and like all of like the energy and like let the kids play stuff like all that's been going on. Right. It was just it's just more publicized now because social media allows it to happen. But like in the early nineties, like these guys were hitting homers and letting you know they hit homers. You know, like it was happening. You know, that's just the way it was, and that's you need that. Well, for me, I, and I hope some of these players have, I'm sure they have, because for me, I didn't really need Skip Bertman to tell me to grab a program right. and see where I needed to be to be considered one of the best right. all time here, right? Like, and if you do that, you're going to take a walk down memory lane and see that Jason Williams, you know, is Which the know second all time, and Antoine Duplantis, and, right, and Brad Cressy at 78 home runs, and Eddie Furness at 80. So if you want to be the best ever to play here, you got to hit 80 home runs in your four years here right, right. Um, hopefully these kids have done that but if they haven't and they're listening I would suggest they do that like what are you doing then if right. you don't know what how right. you leave your mark here other than winning a championship then you should go look at the past that the people that have been record setters or bricklayers as, no as you know people would call them but um, that's important they've got to know what the expectations are what the history of the program is and they've got to take some pride in that so there's also got to be a link to okay now I understand who Eddie Furness is but also have to have some link to take some pride in that right you know and, and 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 we'll we'll see hopefully yeah. they're able to do that Dude, I know your time's valuable I appreciate, no, man, you I, appreciate it. I appreciate it coming we can do this I mean shit, I love I love talking baseball I love talking more about this than the actual on-field stuff. So anytime, bro, I'll love it. Well, as the season progresses, we can do this. I might not be able to come in here, but we'll do the video. video call. We'll do it. It's fine. I appreciate it. We're going to take a little bit of a break. Sure. Let you get out of here. You're watching Mike Dope, brought to you by Sterling Automotive. We'll be right back in about one minute. you buy Doe's Eat Place. Maybe the best burger in town. If you're not looking for lunch, you're looking for dinner, go check out Doe's Eat Place. They have unbelievable choice of meats. They have unbelievable tamales. They have a great atmosphere, great vibes. If you're looking for a homey Louisiana type of atmosphere, but you're looking for high quality food, Doe's Eat Place is your spot. Go in the back bar, sit at the bar, have a couple drinks, watch some games, enjoy the atmosphere, enjoy the vibes. Check out Doe's Eat Place, the best place in Baton Rouge to get your meats. Hey y'all, it's Mikey from Miked Up. I want to talk a little bit about my friends down at Sterling Automotive in Lafayette. They're locally owned and operated for over 25 years. They have 13 locations, four in Opelousas, five in Lafayette, one in Broussard, two in Jennings, one in Crowley. They sell any type of car you could possibly find, Buicks, GMC, Ford, Lincoln, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Hyundai, Genesis, and Kia, along with five pre-owned locations. They have over 1,500 cars in inventory, on site, unbelievable service, unbelievable people. If you're like me and you're on the go, they can sell and they can ship you cars up to 200 miles, unbelievably convenient. Again, my friends down at Sterling Automotive in Lafayette, go to their website at saveatsterling.com. Awesome people, go check them out. This segment is brought to you by Doe's Eat Place. Maybe the best burger in town. If you're not looking for lunch, you're looking for dinner, go check out Doe's Eat Place. They have unbelievable choice of meats. They have unbelievable tamales. They have a great atmosphere, great vibes. If you're looking for a homey Louisiana type of atmosphere, but you're looking for high quality food, Dozy Place is your spot. Go in the back bar, sit at the bar, have a couple drinks, watch some games, enjoy the atmosphere, enjoy the vibes. Check out Dozy Place, the best place in Baton Rouge to get your meats. Miked Up is brought to you by Law Offices of Lance Beal. Call them today, 337-991-6263. They know what it takes to win. Their practice areas include personal injuries, small business, family law, estate planning, with an emphasis in construction law. Your choice 
for reliable representation. 337-991-6263. Hey y'all, it's Mikey from Miked Up. I want to talk a little bit about my friends down at Sterling Automotive in Lafayette. They're locally owned and operated for over 25 years. They have 13 locations, four in Opelousas, five in Lafayette, one in Broussard, two in Jennings, one in Crowley. They sell any type of car you could possibly find, Buicks, GMC, Ford, Lincoln, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Hyundai, Genesis, and Kia, along with five pre-owned locations. They have over 1,500 cars in inventory on site. Unbelievable service, unbelievable people. If you're like me and you're on the go, they can sell and they can ship you cars up to 200 miles. Unbelievably convenient. Again, my friends down at Sterling Automotive in Lafayette, Go to their website at saveatsterling.com. Awesome people, go check them out. He would be our fastest runner. He's, He's faster, faster than Altuve. Altuve. He, throws he throws harder, harder than, than Verlander. Verlander. And he, <laughs> and he has, has more power, power than George. George. And, and I was, I was just like, like, huh? What? <laughs> he goes, yeah, like, <laughs> that's, that's who he is. is. I, was I was like, like no, no way. way. Welcome back to Miked Up, brought to you by Sterling Automotive. Uh, that was a great conversation right there with Dougie Fresh. Um, that's why I wanted to get him in here, because we've me and him have these conversations all the time about what goes into winning, right? What goes into like a winning culture, culture, right? Tradition. We're, we're, like not just on field stuff. Like, yeah, there's a lot of things on the field that you see, but I think a lot of the things that you see on the field happen off the field. I think some things that, you know, it's not if, if, if the consensus is it's not because of the talent. It's not because they aren't talented enough. Then it's because something else. And for me, that something else is not having, not having that type of leadership off the field. Which, like I said, I don't know. I don't know the details. I don't know. I think they probably they have people in place that have that. And I think. Look, sometimes these things take a little time, and sometimes it'll click and it'll happen and it'll go. I think they're they're still in a position to be right where they need to be at the end of the year. Yeah, yeah. It's not like we're. I don't feel like we're writing the Ocean no. Baseball series or season off. It just feels like that. It does feel like they're missing something. Yeah. And like I feel like Doug Thompson put good emphasis on what is important. And look, a lot of people can say like, "Oh, he's just talking." Back in my day, like you were saying, like but it's not. It's not that, dude. This is LSU baseball. And it's a tradition, and like I know it. I haven't played a fucking minute for LSU but right. I understand what it is right. you know like he's talking about looking to find that person somebody's got there There has to be people in that dugout I thought that it would know have been a Bianco true. moment yeah and it is Bianco like it should that's, be that's part of it but like, it's you hard have to be that like guy that. if you're not you're playing every day it's a pitcher you know what I mean he's like well we got these relief pitchers like well no they're not in the dugout you know right. what I mean right they're over there trading baseballs for hot dogs if you're smart Yeah, well, but right. like it does yeah. need to be like a Bianco it's like boys yeah and you could tell, like, some of that old guard stuff does come out, and then I understand why people, like, see it. You don't and, need the old guard. It's not it's I know, not that's about, what I'm saying. It's not the same thing. It's, it's not, not that. It's not about, like, oh, you got to, like, pay your dues and do this. That's not it. That's not it. It's, it's understanding Where what's you are. at stake here. It's not like, oh, the expectations are high. Like, yeah, they're high for a reason. And it's not just the expectations of winning. It's the expectations of how, like, the game of base, like, how we want – Things, how things are supposed to be done, like how, you know, you want the guys to be engaging with each other. You want their and look, not every team is that way. That's why you don't win a championship every single year. Yeah. Right. Like it's, it's hard. Those that those things are hard. That's why some of the greatest coaches of all time, Hall of Fame coaches, whether it's football, basketball, baseball, wherever, that's why they are in the Hall of Fame and they win and they talk about it and they talk about this is what a winning like. It's hard to get that, you know. And you know, I think that over time. I think Jay, like I said, I think Jay's the right guy. I think he's going to do, be great for this program. And, you know, I think the guys around the program have to buy in. If not, they're going to bring someone else that is going to buy in. I think, look, like I said, they're seven and eight. They have a chance to, to put themselves in the driver's seat where they want to be at the, end of the, at, at, at the end of this weekend 
And look, it could be worse. It could be Ole Miss, who's the number one team in the country. Yeah. Now they're five and ten in conference. Like, it could be worse. They're seven and eight. I mean, you were a series away from being in the first place in the West. You right. Know I mean, now it's chicken little. The sky's falling. Right. And yeah, that's and, what and LSU look, does not, very well. And I'm right. not yelling. And I'm not yelling. Sky's falling. No, I don't think so either. I'm just saying that like there's a lot of the same things that keep happening and happening and happening. And there's a reason why they're seven and eight and not eleven and four. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like there's. There's reasons why they're not beating the top tier teams all the time. There's a reason why they're losing some of these close games that maybe they should have won. It's because there's something missing, and I think that's something that like I said. Look, it's it's almost May. Weather's getting warmer. I think it, things are going to start to change. Final, it's almost final. Yeah, yeah legs. Hot dog. Hot dog. Um, alcohol. Hot dogs. No school. <laughs> Tiger dog. Pool parties. <laughs> what? All of those things. Ooh, yeah, I mean, like, I think that's all happening. Free I mean, drinks. It's, impressive. it's so impressive their record of. 54 errors, like, yeah. imagine if it was a 54 was probably, imagine if you tried. That's, and that's probably being generous. generous. 54. Yeah. That's being generous. And that's the thing, dude. It's just. 54 is so, f- watching, so many. Watching this week, this past weekend with Arkansas, like, you could see the, you could, that was the difference. obvious difference. The number one ranked defensive team in the conference and the last ranked defensive team in the conference. And you saw the difference. You can get laid with defense too, boys. You do. You can. You can. That's not, I mean, you like, you get laid by wins. You go win, you'll do whatever. You, you'll, you'll be fine. You'll have a good time, no matter what. Just win, win. Go out there and win. Davis, have fun baby. doing Al it. Al Davis, and have, just win, baby. I mean, Al Davis was not good looking. No, you know what Neither he did? Son. Win. Neither Neither is son with the bowl. I don't even know what the heck he's doing. Coconut head. You know how much he pays for that haircut? Please don't. Not, I don't know this. Too if much. If it's over much. twenty dollars, it's ridiculous. It's, dude, it's like between two hundred and four hundred. You don't know that. I do. How? The I internet. Read it online. I don't believe me. everything. What did everything, I tell you about Roy Holiday? Nobody believes everything me. Everything online is real, though, right? Everything's true online. Yeah, but he it's, says enough. He says like fifty percent true, but there's like forty nine in forty nine percent inconsistencies. So you're like, all right, you were kind of right. Yeah, it's like a lawyer. So he pays someone two hundred to four hundred dollars to put a bowl on his head. That's, that's how I know it's not they true. You're saying between two hundred. Okay, you're saying I'll between two hundred to four hundred. How do you know? Like, why is there a two hundred dollar range? Yeah. Okay, your mouse is done. Don't throw it at me. How do you have a two hundred dollar range in between time? I mean, in between amounts. It's a haircut. How is there? I mean, maybe if, is he getting colored? Is his hair getting colored? Like, is, is that like what's what happening? Is he Mark getting Davis? dyed? Uh, Mark, Davis. Mark Davis, yeah. Oh my God, he is hideous. Oh, I don't know. Look, y'all keep talking. I'll look it up. Yeah, we're talking. No, uh, when's the when's game two of the Pell series? Wednesday. Wednesday. Day off. Play. They needed hey, that. They needed the day off. Like, and I think we were talking about this a little bit pre-show, and it's that how much they had to battle through Friday. Whenever you're they, down at home, they stayed out there, right? They never came back. No, obviously. they stayed out there. Yeah. Never okay, good. LA. Yeah. Um, I can't. I can't make that as an excuse. Is a West Coast trip because they've been on the West Coast, West Coast and they won. Um, look, Phoenix. Is just, oh no, they yeah I mean, they Phoenix won in LA. My bad. Sixty four yeah, yeah. and fourteen. Yeah, Phoenix for is the be, I mean the best team in the, in the league. Like. I don't know, everybody's expecting the, the Pels to win this series. But what do you expect to happen to Chris Paul whenever he comes back to the blender? I think, I think fall, applause. I think he's probably going to get a standing O, maybe. Not, uh, he'll get a big applause. People like I mean, they Chris Paul is great here. Well, he left unceremoniously. Yeah, the but way like, he, yeah. he was, was, he was his... fine here. I mean, they weren't, he left because they, they weren't putting him in a position to win anymore. That's why he went out. He wasn't happy with the, where the organization was going. You know, the organization is different now than when it was when he left, you know? Um, yeah, totally. I, mean, I think he's fine. I think Anthony Changed Davis the name of the team. gets the hate, like all the hates in yes. that doll so much. It's just like they forget about Chris Paul. Yeah. Well, dude, Chris Paul, but Chris Paul did a hell. I mean, he had way be- bigger moments for the it oh, was the Hornets, Hornets at the time, but way bigger moments for that organization than Anthony Davis ever did. Absolutely, you know? that's so what I'm like, saying. But he was the he was the chosen one. He was the pick. He was the person that was supposed to. Lead the Hornets then to like. Yeah, a, but they weren't you know, giving him. They weren't do. They they didn't. They didn't keep their end of the promise. With yeah, towards the that, end of it. Yeah, yeah that's what I mean. The West was so won by the, the Lakers prime every time. Spurs right. and Kobe. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like he was in a. But he was. I mean, he put. He did everything he could do with as much like, with what they gave him. He did everything he could do. I mean, I loved watching him get in the lane and just throw alley oops. Crescent City Connection. Yes. Tyson Chandler. Mm-hmm. The Tyson West. Chandler. Bro. He would just hey, throw, throw it. shit down. Block shots and dunk. Is what he would do, and it was great. I loved it. It was exciting. It was fun, and Chris Paul is great. And Chris Paul, I mean, Chris Paul's game is so Jesus. good. It's fine wine. Point guard. Yeah. It it doesn't. It's never going to change because it's never going to diminish. As long as he can be on the court 
and be healthy on the court and move around. His game is yeah, but like it's the Paul Cat. Yeah, 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 but like, but like, but like, he's not like out physicaling, uh, out no. physicaling him. He just oh, know where to get to his he's not using his he ability to beat yeah, people. Yeah, right. Like he's he's beating skill. you with his head. He's his skilled, skill. but he's beating you with his head. Like he understands what's going on. He under he's he's just so elite. I mean, he's it's probably say, the greatest point guard of all time. Could be point guard. If he wins a ring, yes. Could if be. If he wins a ring. Yeah. I mean, Magic. here we go, the whole ring things. That, that's that's what your greatness is based yeah, yeah. off of in the NBA, I guess. Right. Well, any, any, any sport, sport any really. Sport, really. Matt Johnson, and he can make the argument to John Stockton. He's yeah, no doubt. Him, but Stockton doesn't have a ring. Yeah, no doubt. Steve Kerr. Uh, count Re- the rings. Relax. Yeah, Steve, Steve yeah. Kerr. Well, Steve Kerr wasn't a point guard, he was a shooting guard. Oh, yeah, he was too. Yeah, he was, yeah, he was the point guard on that team. Harper. Ron Harper. Ron Harper. But Big Jordan Ron pretty Harper. much brought him back. Yeah. You know, like, Shocker. Bad. Yeah. <laughs> I took that personally. The Pelicans um, sneak again. What was they that? Could, the Pelicans can definitely steal one game. Ingram's turnaround game is so good. So good. They just have to figure out the pick and roll. They are the only problem. The only problem is uh, it's going to be hard for CJ to score when he's getting blanketed. Okay. Well, yeah, they're like bi. They're not going to let bi or CJ beat them. So you well, yeah, Jackson but CJ, hate. but CJ was getting uh, double. He was getting who? Who was the who was defending him? Mikael Bridges. Yeah, the Bridges, best defender. Yeah, <laughs> he was runner up for defensive player of the year. So like our finals for it. So like he is, I mean Bridges is. I mean you could watch it like this. I mean McCollum still put up twenty five, but he wasn't. He was not efficient. Nine, nine for twenty four from the yeah. field. Yeah, he was not. Used a guy like Devontae. But that was McCollum wasn't always. Bridges no, wasn't always wasn't guarding. Always like like when he was not play, not in the game, obviously CJ. So he's had to pick his spots. Yeah. Yeah, and Brandon Ingram like obviously he's a stud and he's a baller, but like it's. That's where I think you should play. It's honestly. a shame yeah. they have somebody Devontae on the Graham over Alvarado. No, I would say they have somebody else on the bench that might be able to help. Graham, He's Zion just... Williamson. Yeah, <laughs> seems like a good fit. I think for this he'd team. help. I think, I think he might help. Nice. Uh, he's ready and he willing. He's ready. And that willing, was willing nice and able. Too. Willing and able. Chain the best game. availability the... is availability, right? Or the he's best available. Uh, is that right? The, the best, best availability. The best ability is availability. Is there you go. That's it. See, I'm, I'm messing up all you kinds of I got one. I got the one I nailed needed, the one right. you needed to. Yeah, I got the one I needed to. Right, came up in the clutch. That's oh, right. For three, got the big knock. Big knock. Yep. Curious. Um, I know I don't. We don't talk much MLB, which we should. Just still bitter. It's just hard for me to watch all these games, but I haven't but, watched any baseball yet. I watched some baseball. Um. The one thing I do want to talk about is COVID's making the comeback. I called it. I know you did. Hold that. You called it. So there's a guy, some guys from the Red Sox are not going to Toronto for the four game series because they can't, they don't, they're not vaccinated. So they're not going. One of them is Tanner Hawk, who's one of their starters. They're number two. He's actually really good and nasty. He's not going to this series. The reason why I'm saying that is because I, I, I don't follow it. All this, I mean, I follow it, but like I'm not. Did you watch hard. baseball before? Yeah, a little bit. Like I don't. And I, now I do you're, it as a, you're boycotting. No, I'm not boycotting. boycotting. <laughs> like I watch, but like Cross I'll pay attention. I'll pay attention to Gosman because Gosman's my guy. So like he's pitching. That's why I knew the Toronto. And like I, I pay attention, but I'm not. Well, I'm not gonna sit there and watch some of the games, especially if I, especially if there's people playing that I feel like I'm better than. Name one. Nope. Name two. Nope. He's not gonna name drop. Not gonna do that. Um. Barry Bonds. <laughs> Corey Seager got the uh, – or Corey Bell. You're better than Whoa. Corey Seager? Corey Seager got bases loaded and intentionally walked. He got the Bonds treatment. Yeah. Did you see Mike Trout's face when they did, did it? it? You know who the manager was that made him do it? Joe Madden. Did you see Mike Trout's face? Crazy Joe Madden. I love Joe yeah, Madden. Yeah, he's like, what he's are we like, doing? What, what are we – Tishley walked him a run in. It was like the fourth inning. What happened after? I don't know, actually. I just saw it on Twitter. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, sure. God, you people with your twi- Twitter. What do you look, mean, Twitter you people? Twitter has everything. But... <laughs> it doesn't matter <laughs> what happened. What do you mean, it doesn't matter what happened after. He walked in a run the fourth inning. I know, it but wasn't if you, the game if you, decider. But if you get the out the next play, maybe there's then a match the fourth situation. Inning. Who it's cares? Would, would you rather give up four runs or one run? It's the fourth inning. Would you rather give up it's four runs or one run? You don't do that. You do not do that. Four or one. You sound stubborn. No, that's not. You don't give. You don't give a run away. I don't care what the numbers say. I don't. I don't. With you just don't know. Video nuts. game boys. Chilling on your video games. Chilling on the video games. <laughs> okay, sorry. Jeez. I mean, <laughs> I'm not a big gamer, okay? Jesus. Okay? So 
Fucking chilling on the video games. Chill. Fuck. <laughs> what do you want from me? I mean, what do you want? That's what they're doing. They're chilling in the room playing video games. On the video games. Chilling on their video games. I mean, now now you can fucking be virtual reality, so you are on the Roblox. video Roblox! Okay. You are on your video game with your fucking... <laughs> your, what's, the, what's the fucking virtual Oculus. reality? Oculus. Oculus. With Oculus, you are in the video game, so fuck off, Lloyd. It's, that's for porn. No, it's not. For you, maybe, or someone who's I don't have one, but that would be awesome. No, but like, apparently, apparently, it's very, Oculus is very good. Like, you get, uh, there's like good workout stuff. Like, you can have boxing games, (laughs) which is actually really fun, apparently. McAfee was talking about it. But like, you were actually in the video game, so maybe they are chilling. Back in my day, we just fought in real life. What? So back in my day, we just fought in real life. Back in your day, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the metaverse, huh? I've never been in a fight. Exactly. Lover. Lover. 30 bucks. Talk about um, shit though. <laughs> all right, we got two segments. <laughs> Thank you. Before Just we like go, people like you, dude. Yeah. <laughs> we got two segments before you go. I did. We have our uh, what's for launchers will be last. That was brought to you by. Are Yours. we gonna try the new way? You play, no, we change. I mean, we can try. Yeah. Three, Arby's. two, one. Everybody Arby's. sets a place. No. Okay. No. Before that, what the though, weekend is for. McDonald's. Before that, curtains. We have our curtain call. <laughs> all of our curtains. My curtain call is Roki Sasaki. He's a What's for lunch? He's a t- <laughs> he's a twenty year old pitcher from Japan. He plays in the Nippon Professional Baseball League, which is the professional baseball league in Japan, which is actually very good. It's like right underneath MLB. It's a watcher. This is where Otani came from. Obviously, he came from Japan, but he played in that league. He was a superstar. Well, this guy threw the first perfect game, or not the first, the yeah first perfect game since nineteen ninety four, right? He. Sh- he throws 100 miles an hour. He has an absolutely nasty splitter, right? But the reason why he why, why the reason why he is my curtain call is because he threw the perfect game, and then the next start he threw eight perfect innings God. before they pulled him. So he, he had pulled. 17 straight innings of perfect baseball, right? He struck out in his perfect game. He struck out 19 guys, 13. He struck out 13 in a row at one point. Jesus, this guy this is, is like going little, to it, be. He's going to be in the big leagues probably next year. I don't. I mean, Did someone bought like signed him or he this, was there. They were trying. Mariner. He was trying to come over, and he's eighteen. But he went to. He played the professional leagues in Japan for the first couple. For I guess this is his third year, and I'm assuming he's going to be in America in the very near future. He's going to follow the Ichiro, right. the yeah Ichiro Suzuki, you see the, the you know, Otani. And the beauty about was that you see Ichiro do the first pitch. Oh, yeah, Ichiro could throw. Ichiro could. Would have been an all-star pitcher. 93. Is that what he hit? Yeah, 93 points. He could, on the in a uniform. How old is he? I think he's like 51. He's, he's, in, in, uni. he's in uni all the time. I, he, say, I think he, he still just takes, wears he still the uniform all, practice. all the time. Yeah, he still takes I've never practice. seen him in anything other than a he uniform. He still takes batting practice. It is free clothes. <laughs> it is. But yeah. he, uh, each row could have been a pitcher. But this guy is unbelievable. I love their Whoa, look at that. Yeah, no, this they, is cool. They put on a show. It's yeah. so bro. Yeah. That looks like... That looks like that so looks they're like baseball... Corn dogs, Jackie. Yeah, so they have way better baseball entertainment than the U.S. This guy's going to... This guy is the next... Yeah, this yeah is, no, it's absolutely electric. Yeah, there. they love baseball. Their there. stadium's cool, too. Like, like cool, too. Like, cool, too. Like, cool, too. Like, cool, too. Like, cool, too. I mean, look, it's... 60 miles per hour. It's... uh, he's three. I think his last start... When he struck it, when he had the oh. eight innings, he his last pitch after at eighty, he only had eighty pitches with hundred one miles an hour. His last pitch, so like he still had. I don't know why they took him out, but the I mean, Kershaw nasty, method. Dude. It's one hundred one, yeah, yeah one sixty three kilometer per mile is it's one hundred one miles per hour. Yeah, he's nasty. So he'll be here. That's my current call. You got Yanks, one? Sign him. Mine was going to be Ichiro, but it is no longer Ichiro. Uh, LSU women's golf. It's hey. the first SEC That's the second championship. One you're going to um. No, no, no. Amanda Davis got my other credit. Oh, I got. The, I did the. I yes. did that. Okay. But uh, they won the first women's SEC championship, but I think in thirty years for LSU women's Sneaky golf. golf so, school. Yeah, they are. Yes, they are. We're growing. We're growing to golf school. Maybe we someone have... should play baseball. We're, we're a baseball school. We'll be all right. We'll be all right. And now you're a golfer. I'm a golfer. I'm getting close. I'm getting close. I'm like. I'm. 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 I'm making huge strides. Big strides. Give me a month, and I'll be. Consistently in the 80s, upper 80s, probably. Good for you. Yeah. Damn. I mean, I've been at that point before. I was between 88 and 92 for a little bit, then I stopped playing. I just got to get my my swing back. Take notes, it. Lloyd. But I'm, I'm trying. I'm, I can I, boom I, it, though. Yes, he does it far. We're going to play. We're going to get up and get him right. We're going to okay. get those lessons. Maybe on Thursday. Maybe on Thursday. Off. Yes. 
Maybe I'm going to go, I think I'm playing tomorrow, and then Lafayette Wednesday, then playing Thursday. With you? No. Okay. Grind up. Lesson on Wednesday. Business. Um, I'm working. Yes. All, bill- all billable hours. <laughs> all right. So last thing before we let everybody go is our What's for Lunch segment, which is brought to you by Dozy Place. Okay. Our friends at Doze, they're great. They, they have to actually, be a Baton Rouge restaurant, Jack. It has to be a Baton Rouge restaurant. It can't be a chain. Arby's. Um, I had like an idea of what I wanted because I'm still eating healthy. But I still I think I can get healthy at this one spot. But um Yeah. If you're looking for good lunch, Dozy Place does have great lunch. And healthy. Grilled chicken. You can't go Everybody healthy. goes steak. Grilled you, you chicken. Can't, oh, you go to burgers for lunch. Alright, so what's the what how are we doing this? We're going so one, the two, rules, three. Yes. We're gonna. And then we just, you go three, two, one, or one, two, three. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Three, Down two, down. one. Everybody say a place. If we have two of the same place, that's where we eat. Then we just keep playing this game. They keep. Still I mean, that's up. the problem. Is like. Yeah, you keep going until we get okay. two people to say the same thing. I okay, think that's okay. It's really hard. All right, you ready? Are there that many places? I don't know. I don't know. I don't or should we narrow it down? To no, 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 that's okay. okay. We'll okay. do this. For, we'll just Tiny see bucks. how this goes. Because I think that we're probably gonna hit. That's what something. I thought too. Yeah, I believe in us. Um. All right, ready? Hold on. Okay, I'm ready. It has to be local spots. Not like, yeah, local spots. Three, two, one. one. Chiba. Curbside. Oh, two Chivas. Let's thinking, go. I was thinking it. Oh, what would you say? I said I was, salad station. Uh, uh, I was going to go Romans, and I changed the last minute. That's almost I said I went go. Romans. I said curbside. Yeah. Chiba. Two Chivas. All right, we're going Chiba. What's for lunch? Blunt Chiba City. Hut. Brought to you by Dozy. Chiba is sponsor with them. Yeah, we should. They have a we, cool have, we have Doze, though. We have there. Doze. We have, we have our food sponsor right now. Doze has been great to us. Doze is great. Chiba's a lifestyle. It Doze is. Doze has been great to us. Doze we have, is we... a lifestyle also for some, I would imagine. Mm-hmm. Steak every day keeps the doctor away. Look at Al Michaels. Never Ooh, been sick hey, a day in Wednesday, his life. Wednesday, Wednesday, Chiba Hut is going to be popping. Yeah, 420. 420. You know what the oh, most yeah. popular place is uh, ever of all mad. time? No. They also, yes. Jordan Release has been counting down for three months for 2020. Yeah. Good Lord. They got one holiday. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they, Cold that's all Stone got. Creamery. Line out the door in Wait, what college. Is this? Cold Stone Creamery. Oh, how about cream? this? Now Cold Stone right there by F45 is connected to Great American Cookie Company, so I can't imagine how Are they collabing? Oh, they're, no, they're, 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 I mean, I guess. You have, you walk in, you can get ice cream and cookie cake. Mm. Cookie cake. Which, Which uh, Great American Cookie, best thing in the mall Double for food doozy. or Auntie Anne's? Uh, I, love, I like, a pretzel? well, it's different. They're different to me. One's sweet, sweet one's, one's savory. Yeah. Um, I love. I'm with the Great American Cookies in the mall. I love, but what's your, I like the Double I like doozy. the Auntie Anne's cinnamon pretzel. Oh, Jesus. Mm. That's disgusting. Yeah. Yeah. Mine was 10. You are a weirdo. Yeah, he is a weirdo. What about that? Is Strange weird. kid. Serial killer. Weird. I you did it. Have any you did it. You did it. Can we stop and get you guys from one o'clock? You did it. Lloyd, where's the cat? Yes. <laughs> you did it. Yes. Um, I wasn't even looking, but I was stretching. We'll be back on Wednesday. We're hopefully going to have some guys in studio. Like video who? Calls. Maybe some baseball guys. We're going to see. Uh, Beloso owes us a, a conversation. We can actually bring up these conversations Beloso. in here. We have other people wanting to come in. They're, our doors are getting banged down to be in here. So we're going to do it. We're going to have more sponsors coming up soon. We have. We're creating more commercials, as you can see. We're doing more ads in between. If you're looking to sponsor, if you're looking to be a part of the show, hit me up. What's your cell phone number? I'm not going to give you that. 318-794-9133. There you go. Call me. Anytime. I will not answer. Uh, Like, subscribe us on YouTube. You can catch them mic'd up uh, Mondays and Wednesdays from 11 to 1. And we're live from Earl's from 4 to 6. We're going to have news on about the Uncle Earl stuff. After Wednesday, we are meeting on Wednesday after the show. We are going to start promoing this. I think we're going to start moving our show back a little bit to actually hit the happy hour time. Um, but we have some really cool things working. We have some collaborations going. We're going to be basically gambling. partnering up on Fridays. A lot of gambling stuff. Gambling. We're going to talk a lot more gambling content gambling. coming up here. Um, but until we get to that point. If you want all of the gambling content, if you want all of the updates, if you want all of the cool things that we are doing here, like, subscribe us. We are on all podcast platforms now. Adam, Eve, and Apple. Not Adam and Eve. That's who ate the apple. I thought you were going different. Right? Oh, you pervert. I thought Shut you were going. Up, Lloyd. That's why I'm, <laughs> I didn't see I've been hanging there. around with you too much. That's right. But we are on Apple and Spotify. Adam and Eve. <laughs> If you don't That's watch us, <laughs> what would we listen do to that? us? And if you don't want to listen to us, watch <laughs> us. If you can't watch us live, 
We are, have all of our clips, all of our shows are on our YouTube channel. Like, subscribe. You're watching Mic'd Up. Brought to you by Sterling Automotive. See you on Wednesday. Peace. God, I got the F45 text yesterday because I didn't go last week. At Did all you lose $5? What? What? I didn't lose any money. We're still one. If you cancel. No, I'm not canceling. If you don't cancel, if you just don't show up, it's $5 to your account. Oh, no. I don't sign up at all. Well, like, I start, just go. You got to start signing up, dude. Well, no. It counts against my days. What do you mean? You should just walk in. You have a free account. Well, Let's do these. But anyway, they texted me. You are amazing. Nicole. And she said, hey, we didn't see you last week. So I texted her back. I think this is automated. But I said, <laughs> no, I've been a lazy piece of shit that was too hungover from the weekend and I blew it. Starting fresh on Monday or I'll kick my own ass. So that's the, the Lloyd Courtney guarantee. I think that's you're probably honestly probably texting Bo. No, he's definitely that's texting. More, that's automated. Like, he's that's 100% the F- She texting. said it wasn't automated. He's texting the That's automated. probably the F45 like number. It says crew at the bottom. I got the mic like in my face now. That was that we're done. I thought we were done. Oh no. Now we're done. Now we're done. Now we're done. Love See you on F45. Love you everyone. He is risen. <laughs>